by the U.S. everywhere on the globe. In short, what cloak can the establishment now find to mask and vindicate the continuance of U.S. imperialism? With their perks and their power at stake, the court apologists for imperialism have been quick to offer excuses and alternatives, even if they don't always hang together. Perhaps the feeling is that one of them may stick. The argument for imperialism has always been two-edged, what the great old rightist Garrett Garrett called in his classic People's Pottage, a complex of fear and vaunting. Fear means alleged threats to American interests and the American people. To replace the Soviet international communist threat, three candidates have been offered by various establishment pundits. A third threat has been raised in the Wall Street Journal by that old fox, the godfather of neocons, Irving Kristol. Kristol, in a rambling account of the post-Cold War, War, leaps on the Islamic fundamentalist threat and even suggests that the U.S. and the Soviet Union should discreetly cooperate in putting down this looming world period. Here, we see a hint of a new conservative-liberal concept, a benign rule of the world by the United States, joined by the Soviet Union as a sort of condominium junior partner, along with Western Europe and Japan. In short, an expanded trilateral concept. Of course, pinpointing Islamic fundamentalism comes as no surprise from the neocons, to whom defense of the state of Israel is always the overriding goal. But in addition to the negative, there is the positive, the vaunting along with the fear. The positive carrot is the old Wilsonian dream of the U.S. as a global imposer of democracy. Since very few countries can pass the democracy test or have ever done so, this poses an objective that suits the establishment interventionalists fine. For here is a goal that can never possibly be achieved. A goal that can never be reached, but can always be kept shimmering on the distant horizon, is perfectly tooled for an endless policy of massive expenditure of money, arms, blood, and manpower in one foreign adventure after another. What the great Charles A. Beard brilliantly termed perpetual war for perpetual peace. Prophetic Words by Murray Rothbard. Now we turn to what's going on in today's headlines. As we see, are the Marines ending their Afghanistan operation? Well, the story from CBSNews.com says so. They're coming home. But is that true? I'm skeptical. In a ceremony Sunday morning, in dusty desert sunlight, U.S. Marines and British combat troops officially marked the end of their operations in Afghanistan, transferring Camps Leatherneck and Bastion to Afghan control. As national anthems from the three countries played, service members from all three countries stood at attention. The Marine flags were ceremoniously furled and cased in recognition of the end of the mission. But is that just symbolic? Because other headlines indicate that the killing hasn't stopped. 716 killed as army and Persmaga forces liberate Iraq towns. Hundreds of militants were killed in security operations across Iraq on Saturday. At least two strategic towns were brought back under Iraqi control or Kurdish control. Two more towns were also liberated, but at least 716 people were killed and 107 were wounded. Very few security deaths were reported in the violent clashes, 
so the numbers are likely much higher. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. I'll leave you with a quote from Winnie the Pooh. Promise me you'll remember you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, smarter than you think. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know you can get news updates about what's happening with the Liberty Radio Network delivered in the way you prefer? You can sign up for our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. Plus, you can stay in the loop by joining our Facebook profile at facebook.lrn.fm or follow us at Twitter at twitter.lrn.fm. It's all free. So sign up now at updates.lrn.fm for news updates delivered to your email box, facebook.lrn.fm to follow our Facebook page, and twitter.lrn.fm to receive our tweets. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Lock it here for more live content. Free Talk Live is next on the Liberty Radio Network. You're listening to the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, October 24th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,235, silver around $17.19, and Bitcoin is trading around $352.44. Today's precious metal prices are brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from SovereignMiners.com. Interested in mining Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies? Well, Sovereign Miners has you covered. All purchases come with a free script ISIC miner. Visit SovereignMiners.com to buy your miner today. And now, a Liberty Beat special report. A trial in Austin. I was grateful Antonio was there to take pictures of what was happening because I feared for my safety. That testimony was shared Thursday by Norma Pizana during the first day of proceedings in the trial of Antonio Beeler. An Austin, Texas activist accused of refusing to obey a police officer after he stepped in to record and ultimately defend a woman when she was apparently being treated aggressively by police. Pizana is the female passenger who was ripped from her friend's car shortly before Beeler was arrested for resisting arrest and for allegedly spitting in the face of Officer Patrick Oborski. While those charges were ultimately no billed by a Travis County grand jury, they did indict Beeler on a Class C misdemeanor charge of failure to obey the order of an officer. The state is relying on the testimony of Oborski and Officer Robert Snyder, with Oborski testifying that Beeler was verbally aggressive and that he considered him a threat. The defense is attempting to demonstrate that the officers never had the proper authority to detain or handcuff Beeler and that it was the officers themselves that were the aggressors that early New Year's morning. To show the officers as the aggressors, the defense called Pizana to the stand. She told the jury that she called out to Beeler to video record the altercation because she was afraid of what the officers would do to her, saying that she had never been treated like that by a male. At the conclusion of the lengthy first day of the trial, Beeler told the Liberty Bean that he's pleased to see the truth coming to light. I'm really glad that people have been able to come out and tell the truth about what's happened after all these years, and I'm just hoping that the jury, that they're eager to make sure that justice is served. Today is day two in the trial, and it's set to begin with the defense's questioning of Officer Oborski, followed by testimony from an expert on police policies and procedures. 
Beeler will also take the stand. The Liberty Beat will be there in the courtroom. And for the continuing coverage, as well as the full report of Thursday's proceedings, go to thelibertybeat.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at mymagicmud.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 24th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. On Wednesday, a new lawsuit was filed against the Environmental Protection Agency for the agency's approval of a controversial herbicide from the Dow Chemical Company. The suit was brought forth by the Center for Food Safety and Earth Justice on behalf of a coalition of groups, including the Pesticide Action Network North America. The news comes just one week after approval was granted for the use of 2,4-D on genetically modified corn and soybean. A similar suit was filed on October 16th by the Natural Resources Defense Council. The Houston Police Officers Union has accused Democratic candidate for District Attorney Kim Ogg of illegally releasing the name of a juvenile victim of sexual assault. Union President Bray Hunt claims that Ogg released the name of the victim in a news release asking for leads while she was employed with Crime Stoppers of Houston. Ogg stated that no identity was released. She says a victim's name was mistakenly included on a draft script for the television program Predator Check but was not aired on television. Kim Ogg has made headlines in the DA race by promising to decriminalize cannabis in Harris County. The Electronic Frontier Foundation has released an updated version of the Surveillance Self-Defense Report, a guide to protecting yourself from spying while on the Internet. The report includes information on important security topics, guides to privacy software, and guides for activists and journalists. The report was first released in 2009. For more information, visit ssd.eff.org. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Well, you can. Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com slash Amazon. You can help the Liberty Beat continue to deliver hard-hitting Liberty news and activist updates by doing your Amazon shopping after following our link at thelibertybeat.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 24th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Sources at the video streaming service Netflix reported today that they had sent local man Shane Fowler a personal message earlier just checking to see if everything was okay after the 31-year-old watched an entire season of the FX program Sons of Anarchy in a single viewing session. Well, we happened to notice that Shane had been sitting in front of his laptop and had burned through all 13 episodes of the first season of Sons of Anarchy. So we thought maybe we could send him a note and just sort of make sure he was doing all right or if he needed someone to talk to or something. Netflix says the message, which Fowler received minutes after he finished viewing the season one finale of the motorcycle gang drama, was just a way for the company to see if there was anything they could do for their longtime subscriber. I mean, we do this stuff all the time. Just last year, Mike Ralston from Bartlesville, Oklahoma, watched all four seasons of The Tudors after his wife left him. We were there for him. We just like to check in on our customers from time to time. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You're listening to the live Sunday night show. Yes, we are live here on Sunday night, as Free Talk Live is live every single night of the week. You can find us at freetalklive.com. If you're new to the show, just joining us and want to find out a little more about us. Tonight, it's Stephanie with you. And Brian. And Mark. Free Talk Live is, unlike other talk radio shows, uh, an open phones format, so you can actually call and bring up anything that's on your mind. We've definitely got some stuff to talk about, including a... Uh, A botched panty raid and people migrating from high to low tax states. We'll find out what that's about here in moments. But if you've got something on your mind that's uh, different that you want to bring up, you can call us at 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-3733. 855-450-FREE spells out the word free. Or you can call us on Skype. Our Skype handle is lrn.fm. So, Mark, let's get into this uh, high to low tax states thing. And just a little bit of background on this. We are broadcasting from New Hampshire. This is an unusual place in the northeast of the U.S. because it's pretty much the only state in the U.S. that has uh, 
low taxes, uh, no state income tax, no sales tax, no estate tax. As far as I understand, there are property taxes, but you could argue that depending on if you're looking at Connecticut or Massachusetts or New Jersey, it's really not as bad as some of those places either. So, Indeed. Um, so yeah, New Hampshire has the lowest taxes in the Northeast and in, in some, for some people, cause it's going to be different for everybody. Uh, for some people, they've got the lowest taxes anywhere in the U S. So, People notice that, right? They uh, take that into account when they're thinking about where they want to live. For some people, where they live is just a result of kind of where they happen to be born. Uh, But for some people, it's a conscious choice. And so what happens when people take that information into account and act on it? Right. Well, um, for here from the Washington Examiner, the Northeast, once the nation's political engine that produced presidents, House speakers, and Senate giants, including the late Edward Kennedy is losing clout in Washington as citizens flee the high-tax region. According to experts worried about this trend, the the Census Bureau reports that population growth has shifted to the south, and the result is that the 11 states that make up the Northeast are being bled dry of representation in Washington, D.C., Wow. Now I'm not too concerned about representation in Washington, D.C. I'm certainly not concerned with the state's representation in Washington, (laughs) D.C. Yeah, it doesn't seem to make much of a difference to your personal life, but uh, that's actually really interesting. People are migrating to the South, away from the Northeast. Yeah, the South generally, you know, lower tax. There's going to be less likelihood. I know know Florida, for instance, doesn't have an income tax. There's also uh, right to work states, South Carolina, things like that. Sure. You're you're talking about uh, right to work means that, uh, you know, that unions are less likely to sort of control who works and who doesn't work. Right. There's no doubt that right to work states tend employees tend to get paid less, especially non-union employees tend to get paid less. Now, what I'm curious about is, are they going to put some kind of exit tax in place now that they know this information? Are they going to attempt to uh, (laughs) fence people in? Because that's what the U.S. does. If you try to leave the U.S., if you try to renounce your citizenship, you're going to get smacked with a gigantic exit tax. And a lot of people, you know, that may hold them back from wanting to do that. Sure. A a good friend of mine is attempting to, in in the process. I was thinking of that person, yeah. yeah, Giving up his citizenship, and he's going to be paying like almost seven figures, as I understand oh it, too. As though he sold like everything that he owns. Right. They just have to get their cut. And then plus there's a there's a fee on top of that just to apply to renounce your citizenship, just to ask them to consider that maybe you want to go somewhere else and live somewhere else. Uh, you have to kind of ask their permission and you have to, don't you have to kind of grovel and prove that you're not doing it for tax reasons, which well, why would you do supposedly it for other you're reasons? not supposed to, to give up your citizenship for tax reason but the only thing they can do to you is prevent you from coming in the country after that so they can't prevent you from giving it up that's correct huh well but, hold that thought because we do have a call speaking of the northeast we've got a call on the line from new york it's lauren hey lauren you're on free talk live what's on your mind tonight yeah man yo long time no call in eh <laughs> yeah haven't heard from you in a while lauren <laughs> Yeah. What's up, guys, man? Yo, love the show. Terrific. Is that Stephanie on the camp thing? Or? Yes. That's me. Oh, the operation's hot, really man. been working out well. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's well, trying Mark, to take credit for my dashing good looks. <laughs> but what's on your mind tonight, well, Lauren? Mark looks sexy, too, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> What'd you call it about, Lauren? <laughs> well, I, I told a guy I called him about Obama and Ebola, and Obama basically wants everybody to be infected with Ebola. Oh, God. Why? He, what wants, you think he that? wants people to be infected? Yeah, of course. So they can come out with the vaccine and make money with it, man. It's a big business, bro. I think that they've got to come out with a serum on this, and they've been sort of working on it. But um, so for one, people in Africa can't afford it, right? Can't afford what? The vaccine? That's right. Um. I'm 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 not sure. Well, they can afford tickets over here, so I, I don't know. As far as um, I mean, you know, I I actually went to medical school for two years, and I've got a PhD in biochemistry. So a little about the Ebola virus itself. Uh, developing a vaccine just takes a long time. You know, there's a lot of testing that should be involved. Sometimes they don't actually test it as well as they probably should, but sometimes 
you know, it just takes longer to produce vaccines. But there are drugs that are already available that could potentially be used against Ebola if they were tested. And that would be a much better option because it's hard to produce vaccines on a large scale. And I, even then, I probably wouldn't trust it. You know, the government wants to inject me with something. I'm going to ask the hard questions, you know, before I allow that to happen. So. Well, you may not have a choice. I mean, they may just take you to a FEMA camp and boom right there. I mean, we all know Ebola and HIV AIDS was created by the U.N., we know that? Uh, I, don't, I don't know about that. I, I thought somebody was like messing with monkeys. <laughs> I figured he was going to say it was the Jews because they can't get either. What's that? Who? What? <laughs> I was kind of like waiting for someone to say it was the Jews that made them because Ashkenazi Jews are less likely to get either of those. Are you Brian? I am. <laughs> oh, okay. Because you always talk about Jewish conspiracy stuff. Like it's kind of weird. But. Well, Brian Brian has a background. I think you should explain that, Brian, because oh, it's, well, it's I, good I, feedback. I have a, yeah, sure. You I do have a, always talk about... It's true, but that's because I've been accused of like being a part of it most of my life, uh, living in oh. New York and being Jewish. <laughs> like People just lay it out. Like A lot of these 9-11 truthers, they like to stand in the middle of the streets and say the Jew, blame the Jews for everything. So that kind of affects you growing up. I haven't seen that, man. I'm from New York. I've been a part of the 9-11 truth movement. I haven't seen that at all. Really? You know I mean, but I am familiar with the. Um, there's a Harat um, article on a Jewish messenger company getting a warning about 9 11. You can look that up on Google. Yeah, so they took the day off, right? Yeah. Yeah, it exactly. Wasn't, it wasn't, so, right, right, so you've seen it. Before, <laughs> and what is that? It's not, it's not so, being Brian's. Racist. I mean, a lot of people got a tip off about it. I mean, Condoleezza Rice sent a tip off about it. I mean, a lot of people weren't flying. On uh, the day of 9 11, bro. It wasn't just Jews. They just happened to get the tip off. Well, some people didn't get the memo. Thanks for the call, Lauren. Uh, you know, Brian, I think Hold maybe on. you should. Which Jews didn't go to work? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, because I have family members that died. They, they didn't get the memo. So what well, happened? <laughs> what, what's the, 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 the Haratz? Well, I don't know. Ha, I think he's talking about Haaretz, which is a publication in Israeli newspaper or something, okay. right? Yeah, I, I don't know all the, the specifics because I think it's just completely ridiculous that somehow there's these a bunch of people or that uh, a a genetic group of people and apparently more than just that. Some others did, too, uh, got a letter or whatever saying, don't show up to work tomorrow. You know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's that's mind boggling. But, uh, you know, these, these things aren't uh, this isn't new stuff. And to say that it wasn't around in New York. Oh, believe me, it's there. I mean, it's... well, so Brian, for our listeners who don't know about this, Brian actually basically joined the military because of this, because after 9-11, he saw some people holding up signs and uh, saying that the Jews all took the day off and he had some family members that were lost in that oh, it was crazy event we, and yeah he got mad and got inspired to take action which ended up being a very well, uh destructive thing for yeah i life. felt some kind of need to prove my my patriotism uh which is you know foolish on my part of course to think that patriotism means anything or matters um but you know i was you know that's what i was trying to prove to these people because they're here blaming my you know an ancestry i couldn't care less about uh, for something that how could I possibly have ever been involved in? All right. Does he, does Obama want everyone to get o Ebola? That's a great question. 855-450-3733. Or maybe you've moved from a high-tax state to a low-tax one. You want to talk about it? 855-450-FREE. This is Sunday Show, Free Talk Live. More coming up. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. 
Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm me. comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait, no, now. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from Because you're scared me. You what am I being detained now. for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless free market non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're listening to the live Sunday night show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. You can call us tonight at 855-450-3733. Bring up anything that's on your mind or on Skype at lrn.fm. One more time, that phone number, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Is privacy dead? Not if we have anything to say about it. On November 7th and 8th, coders, privacy specialists, and idea people of all stripes will join together for Hack the Trackers. Oh, good. I'm glad the hackers are going to save us because I'm pretty sick of this lack of privacy that we have on the internet. <laughs> it's the only ones I trust to do it. Uh, it's a transparency and privacy hackathon brought to you by Ghostery. You can enter online or join them in person in New York City to create tools that may remake the web um, as a more transparent place or help users manage how much data they're going to share. The hacks will be judged by experts and voted on by an online community, and winners will receive a prize package, including the all-new Blackphone, a secure-by-design smartphone for people who recognize a need for privacy and want a simple, secure place to start. Participation is free, and registration is open right now. Participation is free, and registration is open right now. Visit HackTheTrackers.com for more information. It's HackTheTrackers.com. That's awesome. Yeah, it's going to be a great event. Don't miss that. All right. Mark, we were talking about people migrating from 
high tax to low tax states, especially away from the northeast of the U.S. And this is interesting because if in case you're just joining us, we are broadcasting from New Hampshire and we moved to New Hampshire on purpose because we were interested in something called the Free State Project. What is that? Well, it's basically a pledge that a bunch of people have uh, signed on to that they're going to move to New Hampshire and get active for freedom, whatever that means to them, if 20,000 other people also do the same thing. And the idea is that if enough freedom-loving people move to New Hampshire, it will have a measurable, uh, sizable impact on the freedom levels of people who live in New Hampshire. And I think I think it was started with sort of political undertones or overtones sure. uh, or the idea that this was going to be a political thing, like people are going to move to New Hampshire and vote. But a lot of people uh, moved to New Hampshire early, like the three of us here. And uh, some of us don't participate in politics at all, but yeah. uh, it's definitely a lot freer than where I used to live in Massachusetts. Right. You're just taking advantage of the freedom that uh, New Hampshire affords. Absolutely. So, okay, tell me more about this exodus from the Northeast. Yeah, and I, I'd like to point out that, you know, there's some glaring examples of where the exodus from the Northeast is happening. It's not New York. It's not New Hampshire. It's not Vermont. It's not Maine. It's New York. New York, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. Yeah, New Jersey. Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rhode yeah, well, Island, too, but, you, you know, they hardly count. You used to live in Florida, right, Mark? Indeed. Well, it's fa- like, isn't there some really large p- portion of the population in Florida that's actually from New York originally? Brian was one of those. He moved from New York to Florida. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> Did yeah, you live on the East Coast of Florida? I lived in Ocala, so smack dead center. Okay. Yeah, usually the, um, the folks from the Northeast will live along the East Coast of Florida. They'll take I-95 down, and the people from <laughs> the, middle, the Midwest will take I-75 down, and they'll live on the West Coast. So that's the reason that you don't hear me with a sort of a New York accent, because I grew up on the Midwest side, where basically, you know, if the, the Midwesterners sort of, they, they won the accent wars in the U.S., where the what they call the Midland accent which is mine, the one that, that the accent that isn't an accent is now, the one that on. like, newscasters have. I'm a voice actor. Yes. The the neutral North American U.S. accent is not a Midwestern accent. No, it's Midland is Mid- what it's called. Yeah, but you're saying that the, the, the mid... You're saying that the people from Chicago won the accent wars. And uh, I'm not I don't saying that the people true. from Chicago at all. Okay. No, <laughs> that that accent's pretty strong. As is the. It y- is. You do yourself a very good Mid- Midwesterner, um, Minnesota gal. You betcha. <laughs> don't you know? <laughs> you do a good one. Uh, that one didn't win. There's no doubt about it. But I, mostly, thank goodness. <laughs> where I live, people talk like this, and I say that uh, I'm from the South, but uh, every you know, ten miles in from the coast in Florida is all Yankee occupied territory. So. <laughs> You know, I might have been born in Florida, but <laughs> I was surrounded by Yankees. You know, surrounded. Uh, there, people ask you, where are you from? <laughs> Sarasota? No, no, where'd you move from? No, no, I was born in Sarasota Memorial <laughs> yeah, Hospital. That's the exception rather than the rule, right? Yeah, I mean, I'll admit I moved just because I didn't want to pay some of the crazy taxes when I joined the military. You know, like they didn't really care. I wasn't going to be staying anywhere. So I set my address for Florida. Of course, when I left the military, I ended up getting dropped off there and, you know, and, and lived there for a while. Uh, but yeah, it was all about taxes, you know, because if I said it for New York, I would have been paying out way more out of my paycheck. Right. If you'd yeah. signed up for, uh, you know, the military in New York City, you'd have had to pay the state income tax, right. the federal income tax, right. and the city income tax. Exactly. Right? Yeah. As to where with Florida, there was pretty much none of that. All right. There's no state income tax. There's no municipal income tax that I can think of in any cities yeah. in Florida. Not one that I know of. And of course, the federal income tax, it's impossible to avoid. Yeah. And I want to I want to make a quick correction about like the right to work states. As far as I know, statistically, you have the opportunity to make a lot more. That doesn't mean normally you do. OK. But you but the opportunity exists because you're not controlled by union prices or union uh, wages that are set, you have the opportunity to negotiate getting a higher, uh, you know, a higher pay grade than you normally would. So I think that's an attractive thing more than a detractive. Yeah, I think people are drawn in by the idea that they're going to do better. Right. Everybody expects to succeed and excel and obviously. And uh, yeah, and more know. businesses will go there because they don't have to deal with unions. And that's kind of what we're talking about here in these uh, these northern states is this isn't an issue of population decreasing in these states. It's an issue of population growing more slowly in these states. So uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, um, apparently. But there's an equilibrium there because, in okay, so the population of a state 
a lot of things contribute to that. Sure. One is births, one is deaths, okay? Mm -hmm. That's probably going to be pretty consistent no matter where you go. Another is people moving into the state and people moving out of the state. And you get some... You get some equilibrium where if there are more people moving out of the state than are coming in, then the population is going to be slowly shrinking over time, right? Right. So that's basically what's happening? Well, the population in uh, with immigration and births in the United States has it so that population pretty much in every state is growing. But other states are growing more quickly than um, the Northeast states. So the representatives, since, uh. since the House of Representatives is limited to 435 useless thieves— <laughs> um, they, um, they have to kind of move the districts around and assign, you know, more thieves or less thieves per, per state, depending on, you know, what whatever they are. Now, New Hampshire, Vermont, I think that uh, they're pretty well set with their, I think Vermont may have one representative and New Hampshire has two. So it's unlikely that those numbers are going to change anytime soon. But when you look at places like Massachusetts and uh, and and New York, where they have quite a bit uh, of population and the representatives are m much more numerous, that's going to have to be readjusted. So they've lost forty percent, four zero percent, if you count the entire Northeast, of wow. their representatives. That's, that's quite a lot. It's a lot. Um, and so here it says, critics blame rising taxes in states such as Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Connecticut for limiting population growth in the Northeast to just 15% from 1983 to 2013. So that's over the course of 30 years. While the rest of the nation grew more than 41%. So nearly three times. Huh, the, the that's biggest, a pretty big difference. The biggest impact comes from the loss of congressional representation. Deep in a recent report, for example, the American Legislative Exchange Council, and I read everything they've got, <laughs> tabulated how the drop in population relative to the rest of the nation cut the region's power in Washington while the states from Pennsylvania to Maine had a uh, 141 uh, House members in 1950. They're down to 85 today. I think we've hit the break. I yep. think so, too. <laughs> Free talk. Nope, now we're hitting it. <laughs> There's I more coming up here on Free Talk Live. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the House seats are down from 141 to 85 from uh, 1950 to now. That's a 40% drop. Interesting. We'll find out more about this here in moments. Have you moved from a low to a high, high to a low tax state? Let us know. 855-450, free Sunday show, Free Talk Live. More coming up. Time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $60. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Do you ever say, I could care less, when you really mean the opposite? You mean to say, I couldn't care less. It's a common mistake. You are judged by how you speak, especially if you're looking for work with so many more applicants than openings now. But even if you're not, avoiding common misstatements will help you make the most of the dozens of conversations and transactions that crowd your daily routine. So whatever you say, don't say whatever as a single word sentence. It's the most annoying expression in the American English language, according to a recent poll. And avoid cliches like the plague. Just kidding. But seriously, at the end of the day, you'll want to avoid this scenario, sounding like everyone else. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. You are listening to the live Sunday night show. Yes, I know, not too many radio shows are on the air on Sunday night, but we are. And... Good news for you. We also have an open phones format where you can call and bring up anything that's on your mind, not necessarily just what we're talking about, which happens to be at the moment um, people migrating from high to low tax states. There's a bit of an exodus going on from high tax states like New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, uh, especially in the Northeast. The number to call if you want to get in touch with us tonight is 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE spells out the word free. That is, of course, the Pro XPN toll-free call-in lines. One more time, 855-450-3733 here on Free Talk Live. And let me tell you, Pro XPN is something you want. If you care about your privacy, this is step one in the world today because so much happens in the digital realm. So much happens on the internet. And the only real encryption you can count on, the only real privacy you can count on is when it's being done client side. That means when it's being done on directly on your phone or on your tablet or on your PC, not getting sent up to a server and getting encrypted there, but right there on your, your personal machine. That's how you want to do it. And a virtual private network from ProXPN is step one to achieving that. It, it, it does everything client-side, uses open VPN. This is open source stuff that's been checked out by the geeks. You don't want to fall for the open source fallacy. But believe me, OpenVPN is just one of those standards that has really stood the test of time. And it's available for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android. It's very easy to install, even on Linux, uh, though it's a little bit different there. But it's really easy to install, really easy to set up, really easy to use. And if you travel the world a lot, this is something else you want, too, because this VPN in most parts of the world is going to get you past a lot of those uh, nasty national blocks that exist. Oh, my exist. gosh. Yeah, not, not even just the government. Like, it's so easy for someone to create a fake Wi-Fi network if you're sitting in a cafe oh, yeah. or something. Yeah, and yeah if you're at the airport. You connect to it, and then all of a sudden they've got all of your passwords. Yeah, exactly. So you want to get your hands on this. And look, it's not expensive, okay? Use that code FTL50. Go with the annual, the yearly account, and you'll get 50% off uh, the lifetime of your account. Not just for a year, but for the lifetime of your account. And this is something you you want for a lifetime, believe me, because it's only going to get better. Uh, and so also, you if you love Bitcoin, uh, so does ProXPN. You can use the code FTLBTC and you'll get 62% off that yearly account. Uh, but you can get a discount with whatever whatever account you go with, or, you know, whatever account type you decide to go with. So go to ProXPN.com, get control of your privacy. It's yours. It's your right. You want it. ProXPN. All right. Let's go to the phones where Chris in Indiana is on the line. Hi, Chris. You're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hello. Hey, I was calling in. I'm a big fan of Free Talk Live, and so is one of my friends. He turned me on to you guys. And 
you know, I had, I went on vacation recently, and I was um, I was kind of you know left out of the loop for a while. And he was saying how the main host, it's not you two, but yeah, uh, more Ian was kind of slamming Rand Paul about stuff. It's like what was going on with that? Because Rand Paul, in my opinion, I mean, look. I understand the whole anarchist movement because I am an anarchist, but the, the thing that we all have to realize, everybody in this movement, is that we've been from point A to point C, and to get back from point C to point A, we have to get to point B first. We cannot wake people up by yeah. going... You know, Chris, far. I... Yeah, people are not going to listen. They're going to just turn us off if we go too far with things. So I was just wondering because with Rand Paul, he has a really good chance of being president. I'm not, and I'm not naive. I'm just saying that we have to get back because he's not perfect. I'm just saying that we have to get back to the fact that we have to do this back in, incrementally because the whole thing has gone. Yeah, Chris, this Chris, way uh, I, I don't know what Chris, I don't know what Ian said, but. I, I mean, I'm inclined to agree that I, or actually, I'm inclined to disagree. I don't think incrementalism works. Uh, like, there's the, the I, saying I that. I agree. I don't think. Yeah, there's the saying that incrementalism, uh, in theory, is perpetuity in practice. Okay, meaning that it perpetuates what's already there in practice. Uh, I mean, this is something like, you know, slavery in. Uh, you know, in the 19th century, there was no incrementalism to be had. It's like, no, we just stop this right now. Uh, you know, or you just or Harriet Tubman just goes and grabs as many slaves as she can and gets them as free as possible right away. Not asking, not voting, wasting no time. Uh, and so I and most businesses, if you listen to like Google, I mean, I'm not saying government should be run like a business per se, but there's a lot of people who would make that argument. Um, but most businesses know also that incrementalism uh, it does not work. You need to disrupt. You need to just like shock what comes in. Now, I grant you, Chris, that you're right in that if you just come out with like this, the shock of, of anarchy or whatever, that. Most people won't know what to do, and it's just going to scare them and terrify them. But then I would also say to you that perhaps, just perhaps, anarchy is not for everybody. Well, uh, first off, I would say Ian would never self-identify as, as an anarchist. That's true. And I would also say that, uh, yeah, I mean, Ian, th this is how Ian feels about it, because what Ian wants is to talk about the ideas of liberty, whereas what Rand Paul wants to do is get into office. Now, I'm going to vote in the Rep Republican primary uh, in two years or whatever, and if Rand Paul is the most liberty-oriented choice I have in the Republican primary, he's the guy I'm going to vote for. Um, and I hope that that's what other folks do. But, I, you know, I mean, Ian's opinion doesn't represent my opinion, for instance. Well, you got Mark's vote, Chris. <laughs> Not me and Brian, though. <laughs> no, but I was just saying that incrementalism does work because, I mean, it's all been incrementally educated upon most of the people that don't see what we're talking about. So we have to incrementally go back, is what I'm saying. You cannot just go overnight to all these people that have been incrementally educated into watching American Idol every night. You cannot just overnight put them and educate them to think like a libertarian I, 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 no, or an anarchist. Can you I know respond? What I mean? Yeah, go ahead. I mean, you can't do it. I think I understand what you're saying, Chris, and it I, it kind of makes sense when you frame it that way. Like the pot, the heat of, in the pot with the boiling frog has been gradually turned up. You know, that's the analogy to tyranny is boiling a frog. You turn up the heat slowly and the frog doesn't notice. So maybe we should turn it down uh -huh. slowly. But then again, I, I don't know. Sometimes when you try incremental solutions, you end up getting less than what you ask for. And so trying incremental solutions ends up getting you maybe nothing, whereas trying um, extreme solutions or trying pr uh, principled solutions may end up getting you an incremental solution, right? Like <laughs> shoot for the moon and you'll land among the stars, perhaps. Well, what I'm saying is that I am just going off of my life experience here because I used to be how, one of How long have you been like old. interested in uh, liberty? Just, just curious. That's what I was just going to get into. I used to be somebody believe it or not, that was into sports. I'm 30 years old. I was in college, and I was all into sports every day, and I had never even thought about political things. But about six years ago, I really started getting into this. And the more I got into it, the more I got interested, the more I started listening to people, the more I started getting into podcasts, you guys, a whole bunch of liberty movements throughout the whole country. I started reading books. 
I started, I turned off the TV. I started reading more about the internet. I got away from all that crap, those sports that they, you know, they give us as a diversion. And I'm really, really just, that's all my attention is. It's just all this political stuff, like the Constitution, the Ebola, the anarchism, all this stuff. Like, uh, I mean, I'm just, I'm just somebody that wants my freedom. Yeah, well, that, that's... You, Chris. You know I mean? Thanks. Thanks for the call tonight, and uh, glad you're out there listening. What yeah, you- well, I was going to say, I mean, I understand exactly. I think a lot of people went through the same path that, that Chris went through. I, I totally understand. But I think the, the point that I've come to is that, yeah, I mean, he's right. You're not going to get everybody to just suddenly overnight to understand all this stuff. It's not possible, and he's, he's dead on. But then that raises the question, are we trying to free everybody or just ourselves? And if we're just trying to free ourselves, why can't just a little group get together and just do their thing over here? You know, yeah, I, you don't I, have to wait for Rand Paul to free you. If that ever happens, you can take steps in your own life to live more freely. And maybe drastic steps to, to do that. And, and who knows what that could look Let's like. Let's talk about some of those when we uh, in here in moments on Free Talk Live. If you want to share with us how you've got more free in your life. Call us, 855-450-3733. I bet it didn't have to do with politician. 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live, the Sunday show. More coming up. The event you've been waiting for is here. Lumber Liquidators, third annual full flooring yard sale. It's your chance to get first quality, full warranty, direct from the mill flooring at unbelievable closeout prices. Like oak laminate for an incredible 19 cents a square foot. And pre-finished three-quarter inch solid maple for just $149. Plus beautiful bamboo for 63% less than other stores. Take advantage of our 20 years of savings with 20-month special financing. And get even more unheard of flooring deals in our stores. Full flooring yard sale is Thursday through Monday only. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. DB. Books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Hi folks, Ronnie McMullen here for Life Change Tea. Healthcare is a problem, whether you're for or against Obamacare. It's a mess. My question is, who do you trust? Do you want to be told what to do, or do you want to make your own decision? My opinion, preventative maintenance. Keeping your colon clean is preventative maintenance. A little exercise, a balanced diet, and drinking Life Change Tea. It tastes great, and it helps with constipation, high cholesterol, liver problems, acid reflux, and much, much more. And with the holiday season upon us, you can get some extra tea for free. Don't wait for Obama. Make your own decision. Order now. Call us at 928-308-0408. That's 928-308-0408. Or you can log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Ridding yourself of harmful toxins is truly preventative maintenance. Getthetea.com. Free Talk Live. People, they like to complain about the idea that the money is taxpayer dollars. It's not really true, is it? I mean, they were your dollars until you gave them to the government. Right. Now they're their dollars, (laughs) and they're going to do whatever the hell they damn well want to do with them. You're right. It is still your money in that if a thief comes and steals money from you... It doesn't cease to be yours just because they stole it. You still have a claim on that, but you don't have the ability to control the thief unless you actually have him in your custody. Mm. So that thief is going to go out and buy a big screen TV or do whatever, you know, spend it on coke and whores or whatever it is that thieves do uh, with the money that they steal. And you That's what the politicians do with it. Yeah, you, you know, you can call the thief on the phone and say, I told you not to spend that money on whores. (laughs) And he's going to say, well, thanks for the input. (laughs) Yeah. I, Noted. I appreciate that. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. 855-450-3733 is our phone number here on the Sunday show, Free Talk Live. 855-450-FREE. That is the ProXPN toll-free call-in lines. And hey, if you want to connect with the show, check out news.freetalklive.com. There you're going to find Free Talk Live social media accounts. There are some very cool memes being shared on Facebook by Mark and other people. Yeah, <laughs> Got some mostly other me. Admins who uh, manage the page. And it's you true. can also uh, connect with Free Talk Live on Twitter. One more time or join our mailing list. One more time. That's at news.freetalklive.com. All right. Now, uh, we were talking about this exodus from high to low tax states. I don't know if there was more to say about that. Was there more on that, Mark? Well, I mean, yeah, there's there's plenty more to, to say about it. But that's essentially the, the gist of it is, is that since 1950, the House seats in the Northeast have diminished by 40%. They keep harping on this political representation, which, I mean, I guess it's a reflector of it, but... I don't think that has much of an impact on people's daily lives, honestly. Well, I mean, the government takes more and more in taxes. Um, you know, but is from... any state rep voting for lower taxes? I don't think no, they are. No, no, but that doesn't mean – but state reps are voting for higher ones, and uh, they do – yes, I, I guess well, state if... reps vote for – fewer new taxes. For instance, there's that uh, Grover Norquist and his no new taxes pledge thing, which in and of itself is a pretty powerful, you know, that you'll never vote for a tax increase. That's pretty powerful if you Isn't can Isn't keep... that like a local politician? I thought that Grover was... Grover Norquist? Yeah, no, I don't know who these people okay, are. Okay, I'm sorry. He's uh, <laughs> he's runs this, I don't know, some pack or another that basically gets um, politicians to sign a pledge and they but it's non-binding well it's binding as hell because he comes after them like a pit bull if they um if they break it Yet and he's and quite the commentator somehow incumbents still win re-election 95 percent of the time I mean, yeah but the ones that the ones that don't grover norquist likely had something to do with it i mean it's yeah. it's not a lost cause when it comes to politics but the larger the political organization the more lost the cause is you as an individual so, have far more power by lobbying and being part of some kind of political organization than you do by voting. So if people actually – if it was actually true that having more representation in Congress would make your life better by lower taxes or whatever, if that was actually true, then people would be moving to the states that already have the most representatives like California, and that's not happening. Well, New Hampshire has the most representatives, and it's one of the few populations that's doing well in um, the Northeast. Is that true? Um, reasonably. I thought it was based on population in the House of Representatives. Mostly people seem to be moving for these reasons, tax burden and weather. Mm -hmm. And the fact is sunshine doesn't need to be shoveled. And it also, it costs, it's, it's less costly to air condition something than it is to heat it. So those are the reasons uh, the Northeast is, eh, you know, cold. <laughs> when you start looking at places like uh, Massachusetts and New York, it's a lot of money to, to heat a residence there. And then you've got to ask yourself if you're looking at a job that pays the same in Florida or in New York and you're going to pay income tax in New York and you've got to shovel your driveway. And you got to pay a city 
income tax and you got to get an apartment in New York yeah. City. That's very well, expensive. There's no place like New York living. City. You're never going to replicate that. Out, yeah. and, and people want that. They want but that the major metro of thing. Living there is just sure. so expensive. If you have okay, so either you love the city. Or you... Um, you feel stuck there. You, well, you make really, really good money in like the financial industry or some in- other industry that's uh, that's based there. Or you should get out. Uh, well, those are the three things. Yeah. I mean, there you could take that to a whole other level, I think. Th- this is an, a layer that I wanted to add on th- onto this discussion. There is actually another radio host that we know, Angel Clark, yeah. who just uh, expatriated. She just moved from Delaware to Mexico, Acapulco. Acapulco. Yeah. And uh, I guess there's a joke like where... Acapulco has sort of like a Jersey Shore kind of vibe to it. Oh, yeah? I've, I've never been there, but that's no, no clue. there's some reality TV show. Okay. Um, and also, you know, Jeff Berwick from the Dollar Vigilante lives there as yes. well. So there, I guess there does three people make a community, Angel and her husband. and Her claim is is that uh, there are lots of people that get it as far as liberty yeah. goes. Um, I, 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 I am... A, delighted that she's moved someplace that she's excited about. Well, that that's the thing I wanted to mention on the air, which was that, um, you know, the cost of living, if you make an American salary, right, or if you have an internet business and you're making a salary that is average or a below average for an American, but then you go and live in Mexico, you are going to be doing really well because things are just cheaper there. Yeah. Food is cheaper. Housing is cheaper. And in certain places, you don't have to worry about getting your head chopped off and thrown in a mass grave. Um, oh, stop repeating that. I mean, well, that's, I mean, yeah, there are look, crappy places in Mexico. <laughs> However, would you want to live in Compton or Detroit? I wouldn't. No, no, no. no. I'm neither. not trying to perpetuate anything. I, but it's literally <laughs> true that they, there's these 40-something students that have gone missing. They thought they found them in a mass grave. Turns out, no, that wasn't their mass grave. <laughs> yeah, I'm right? more so worried they, about the mosquitoes. Then they there. found another mass grave, and that wasn't them in that mass grave <laughs> oh, either. My. So, oh, I mean. It's it's crazy. There's always three sides of the truth, right? Like there are lots of people who fear monger about Mexico and say it's super dangerous. And then there are people who say, oh, that Mexico is not dangerous at all. The U.S. has actually got more arrests and so forth. It's probably somewhere in the middle, right? Like there are dangerous areas of Mexico and there are dangerous areas of the U.S. But if you can find a nice area of Mexico and make an American salary and go and live there, you're going to be doing pretty well. I, I agree with that completely. And before you make some kind of decision, you should go someplace, um, check someplace out. Uh, oh, absolutely. That's my opinion. <laughs> yeah, uh, that goes for moving from New York to Florida, too. Yeah, or well, from Flor- wherever you are to New Hampshire. Florida's a good case is to always keep in mind that things can change because Florida, the reason why it's so uh, tax light in my opinion, is because of the tourists. Sure. Uh, you know, it's tourism. They make I would plenty call of, that an undisputable fact. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. I mean, th- there's they make plenty of money on tourism, but here's the problem. If the rest of the country or the world or whatever goes to crap as far as economically, no one can pay for the tourism. And so then what's going to have to happen? And this has been threatened a couple times, even when I was living in Florida. Well, we might have to introduce a sales tax. You know, because if the tourism does, just doesn't keep well, up. There's a, there's a sales tax in Florida. Well, I, I'm sorry, a state tax, not okay. a sales tax. Sorry, thank you. The state tax in Florida thing is, uh, compared to New Hampshire, the, the, that conversation is trotted out very rarely. In sure. New Hampshire, every Democrat wants a, uh, an income tax. This will solve everything. All of our <laughs> problems will be solved if we can just get you to fill out a form. Which is crazy, because it's a state that's not in debt to the federal government. Yeah, but they just love it. You know? like, oh, yeah. I hear rich people are making a lot of money. I hate really that. Bothers me. <laughs> exactly. 855-450-3733 is the number to call if you want to bring up anything that's on your mind tonight here on Free Talk Live. We are live on Sunday night. 855-450-FREE, our phone number here on Free Talk Live. So, yeah, um, you know, I guess I was reflecting back on my own move from Massachusetts to New Hampshire, which I did in 2006. That was uh, over eight years ago at mm-hmm. this point. And... It really was an immediate difference. Like people have called me out on this before and said, what's the, you know, what's the big difference between moving, living in Massachusetts and New Hampshire? Do you really get any freedom increase by just moving across the border to New Hampshire? You can choose whether or not and you want to wear a seatbelt. You don't have to fill out an income tax form. That Yeah. You know, the seatbelt thing doesn't, I don't feel the impact of that a huge amount in my life because I wear a seatbelt anyway because I, I care every about time, my body. Like immediately upon getting the car, every single time you just... Reach over Absolutely. and buckle up. I've, it's been ingrained in me from a young age, I suppose. But I do want to bring it up just how important that is that you don't have to wear a seatbelt. Uh, because because it gives I think the people. Cops one less excuse right, to pull yeah, over. People laugh at this when they say that. It's like, oh, what does that do for you? Well, it's not a primary in, in New Hampshire. 
not wearing a seatbelt means it's not a primary offense that you can get pulled over for. For them to check if you're in wearing a seatbelt. In some states, it's secondary. But right, but once that's they changing. See it, but once they see it, they're, they're going to pull you over for something else. But meanwhile, yeah. so the rates of wearing seatbelts are the same in Massachusetts versus New Hampshire. So the people who don't want to wear a seatbelt, the law is not going to make them wear it. You know, uh, So it's not working. But anyway... I do find it a measurable difference because, number one, there are less people, and that means more space to move around, and that's a basic human thing. Like last week, we were talking about cities being kind of like cages to some people. They feel really stressed out when they're around a lot of other humans, and I find that to be the case in New Hampshire. There's more space. There's more um, just just more degrees of freedom, and also not having to pay sales tax and state income tax is uh, quite nice. Indeed. In Massachusetts, it's just you feel the statism. I don't know. Sometimes I'll drive oh, yeah. down there. Oh, yeah. Massachusetts is terrible. Yeah, it doesn't have that name for no reason, right? And yeah, it's like you go down there and immediately you start to see signs along the highway yeah. that say, huh, fine for text. Do not text and drive. Teen drivers may not use their cell phones. And the irony of them telling you don't text and drive while they're holding up a big flashing billboard to distract you while you're driving. It's like if you're not supposed to be reading things while you're driving, then don't read this sign. It's really yeah. silly. And New York's no better. I mean, even if, and that's the thing, is that whether you live in the city or not, that is a state that is completely controlled by New York City as far as politics goes. So New York's, New York, upstate New York looks just like New Hampshire, lives just like New Hampshire, but it pays all the taxes and all the nonsense that the city kind of, thwart, you know, thrusts upon you. Yeah. So there's real freedom to be felt even if, you're, you know, geologically it's the same or ge geographically. I think it's time to get rid of these archaic the institutions yeah. of people claiming to rule over you, calling themselves governments. What do you think? 855-450 free. Free talk. He lives in Nordavin, Armenia with his wife, kids, and grandkids all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, October 26, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.20 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,231 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $354. Antiwar.com reports plans for Iraq's Kurdistan regional government to send some 150 Peshmerga fighters to the Kurdish town of Kobani could be greatly complicated as the Islamic State turns some of its focus on attacking the border crossing near Kobani. Kobani is being defended by various Kurdish militias which have been bringing in fighters from Turkey and Turkey intended to help the Peshmerga make the crossing soon. The Islamic State, by contrast, is getting its own reinforcements from inside Syria 
area itself and doesn't have to deal with border crossings or traveling long distances to get more fighters into the Kobani area. The Islamic State has been pushing toward Kobani for over a month, seizing hundreds of villages in the surrounding area and making its way to the key border town. Kobani is the last Kurdish territory west of the Islamic State's caliphate, and the loss of it would mean the Islamic State would have an uncontested span of border with Turkey near Aleppo. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. The BBC reports scuffles have broken out near the tense North Korean border between South Koreans, some of whom were launching balloons into the north. Some people throwing eggs and yelling, don't put our lives in danger, tried to stop the activist, fearing that leafleting could lead to cross-border exchanges of fire. North Korea called the activist human scum and said the distribution of leaflets could cause all-out war. The North Korean state-run news agency KCNA accused the South of being conniving and having a black-hearted intention. The activists who sent the leaflets are believed to be mostly defectors who have escaped North Korea. They have led a long campaign to undermine the rule of Kim Jong-un. The balloon launchers met stiff opposition from counter-protesters at the launch site near Gimpo, delaying the release of the balloons until nightfall. Some of those opposed to the launch have argued that provoking the North could derail peace talks. A similar launch recently led North Korea to try to shoot the balloons down prompting a brief exchange of fire with the South. In the latest incident, it is not clear if the balloons even reached North Korea. The two Koreas are separated by the heavily fortified demilitarized zone. They have technically been at war since the 1950 to 1953 Korean conflict ended in an armistice rather than a peace treaty. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Reuters reports Ukrainian voters head to the polls today for the first parliamentary election in Ukraine since the street protest ousted former President Viktor Yanukovych and replaced him with a pro-European government, plunging ties between Russia and the West to Cold War-era lows. The poll seems to reinforce President Petro Poroshenko's position in Kiev, but it will likely deepen the divide that exists in eastern Ukraine between places controlled by the Ukrainian forces and neighboring towns in the hands of rebels. Ukraine Ukrainian Prime Minister Arseniy Yatsenyuk, a hawk in Kiev's leadership, warned the country's Security Council this week that Russia, whom he and the West accuse of aiding the separatists with weapons and soldiers, may try to disrupt the election. Separatists are looking to hold their own elections on November 3rd that will select a Prime Minister of the self-declared republic and a lawmaking body as the separatists aim to create the trappings of a functioning government. Poroshenko's bloc is expected to perform the strongest out of all the competing parties with Russian influence in the parliament virtually extinguished, he is expected to pull together a coalition from other pro-European parties. Poroshenko hopes the support will provide him with a mandate to press ahead with peace plans for the East. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Several weeks after the car accident that resulted in the death of his longtime friend Matthew Abrams, local man Keith Bisbee told Onion reporters today that he isn't sure how much longer he should continue using the photo of his deceased friend as his profile picture on Facebook. People can't really expect me to keep this up forever, right? Bisbee told reporters he felt like he had done more than his part to preserve the young man's memory. Bisbee added, however, that he had no idea when to go about changing his profile picture. I'm pretty sure nobody would judge me if I went ahead and changed the photo right now. Matt wouldn't expect me to still have a picture of him up. I mean, I wouldn't expect that of him. You know, I should just do it. Maybe I can go online later tonight when nobody's on. But his girlfriend gets home late from work. I don't really want to seem disrespectful. Maybe it could 
do it tomorrow morning or? At this time, Bisbee has reluctantly changed his profile picture to an image of a gay rights equal sign and is, quote, just waiting to see what happens next. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You are listening to the live Sunday night show, and we are in the second hour of tonight's program. We being me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. Freetalklive.com is our website where you'll find the archives of the last seven nights of shows right there up at the top of the page. You can get more archives by going to archives.freetalklive.com or by following us on SoundCloud. We put out a show every single day, and the archives are free, so feel welcome to Consume them, listen to them, share them with your friends, discuss anything you want over at archives.freetalklive.com. Now, Free Talk Live, of course, is a show where you can call about anything that's on your mind at 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE. One more time, 855-450-3733. You can also call us on Skype at lrn.fm. That is our Skype ID. And we do have, looks like a phone call on the line. Let's go to Janice in California. Hi, Janice. You're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Okay. Um, about the, um, the laws, about no texting and driving. And, you know, I live in California. Mm-hmm. But like I heard on the radio, it said, you know, they put this big old billboard and not like Amber Alert. California has that. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. If we're on the highway, we're not supposed to, right, read nothing. We're supposed to watch the road. I agree with that. Yeah, it's a little distracting. <laughs> it, it's totally distracting. There was actually a study in, uh, I think it was Norway, perhaps, or maybe Sweden, where they compared right. roads with uh, less signage on them with roads that had a lot of signage. And they actually found that the roads Sweden, that... You're right. The yes. roads. Oh, in Sweden, you're familiar with that one. Yeah, they found yes, that the the uh, the roads with less signs were actually safer because probably people were able to keep their eyes on the road more than reading the signs. Right, and distracted driving takes a lot of uh, different forms. It's not just texting. Certainly. Texting and driving is a bad idea, and I do not recommend it for anyone. But so is fiddling with the radio or the uh, GPS or, you know, swatting at the kid or the dog in the back seat or a variety of things that one can do, you know, Please trying don't to swat your kid. Well, <laughs> swatting at. Okay. Yeah, really. But what about this one? Can I interrupt, please? What about this one? Okay, I'm lost. Okay, I'm on a highway or something. And I'm, you know, I'm lost, and I'm just trying to read the signs because I'm, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Sure. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I, um, I make a, you know, I get over in the lane without. Uh, okay, I forgot my blinker, or whatever. But I'm still taking my eyes off the road. Right. Well, right. To what? To put on a blinker? No, I'm saying I, I'm lost. I did. I forgot oh, to put on my blinker. Looking for signage. No, I'm reading the signs because I'm lost. Uh, right. Mm-hmm. Looking for signage. Okay. I'm, yeah, right, so you I, forget I'm to put on your I'm blinker. Lost. I'm just saying I get over, and then um, then what? California laws are real. Um, oh, oh, I'm pulling you over because um, you, I, why I stopped you is because you didn't have a blinker on. Well, I'm lost. They don't care. Oh, yeah, they, they there's no leeway for what your individual circumstances, right? And thank you. But for- I mean, I know I looked, I know I looked to mm. change lanes, but I still got to read signs because I'm lost. Yeah. Not everybody can afford GPS, my God. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks for calling, Janice. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be actually, it, it can be such a, when you're driving on the road, okay, it can be so easy. You're always a foul of some law. Like there are so many different laws, whether it's having a tail light out or having putting your blinker on or seatbelts or whatever. You're always kind of running a foul of something potentially at all times. And so that if just not, creates they can always a... get you for swerving inside your lane. Oh yeah, or they yeah. can just make something up. They can say that you swerved. Like I've been, I got pulled over in my life. I've been pulled over not very many times, four, four or five times perhaps, and been driving for almost. 15 years, something like that. But I remember once a cop pulled me over and claimed that I was swerving. And 
I was not swerving. Like there was just no way. It was a fishing expedition. Also, you don't drink. I, I do not drink. Right. Yeah. It's really important to throw co- that in there. Yeah. The first thing the cop said when she pulled me over was, how much have you had to drink tonight? <laughs> And I said, zero. The same thing I've had <laughs> yeah. in the last three years. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Or did, did you have more? I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying it's, it's the focus is not really on keeping people safe. It's like getting as many, like in some cases it's meeting quotas. Well, in some cases it's just uh, extracting fines from people. There's that Waldo, Calif- no, Waldo, Florida that you guys have talked about, Mark and Ian, before on uh, the show. Yeah, they just had their police department taken away from them. Wow. Yeah. Just shut it down. By the state? That, that place is notorious. I think, got, I think they got fined and then decided that it wasn't worth keeping them around or something like that is kind of how it went. Wow. Well, yeah. What were you saying? Well, I was going to say, you know, and, and nobody really strikes the root on this. Like uh, like the caller had mentioned that, you know, she forgot to turn her blinker on and get over. You know, maybe the road system sucks. You know, like <laughs> like maybe maybe the entire driving system that we have is terrible. Uh, you know, and like a lot of people complain about driving in cities. Look, a lot of these cities were never designed to have, you know, these these big cars or whatever driving through. They're meant for a horse and buggy. No one even thinks about the fact because, you know, it's one of the oldest, you know, it's a, it's a meme, honestly, in the liberty movement where who will build the roads? Right. Without like, government, who? But right. who will build the roads? Yeah. And but it comes down to, well, the roads suck. You know, 30,000 people at least die a year you know, on the roads and everybody wants to say the drivers suck at their job. And I think that's nonsense because honestly, the only thing keeping one driver from hitting you head on is a, it's a stripe of paint in the middle of the road. That's (laughs) the only thing that keeps them from, from hitting you. It amazes me how people can conduct cars on American roads with as few accidents as they have. Sure. It, it, It amazes me. Yeah. And so I honestly, I wonder if the real problem isn't drivers, it's, the entire the road system itself mm. and it you know if, if the government's taking this endless stream of money which they are from you know people's grand grandchildren and great grandchildren why don't they just come up with a whole new system that actually works and that's meant for the 21st century instead of just trying to band-aid the 19th well uh you could get conspiratorial and say that the interstate highway system was actually meant for moving tanks it was, oh, it never was. designed for cars yeah actually. it's a 24-page document that that the you know freeways and all that uh, were you know, the interstate system was designed for militaries to get through. But, I mean, yeah. you can get into the fact cities have always been designed since Florence, uh, actually since Rome, but uh, but Florence was copying them, of course, to, you know, make it easy enough for an army to get its orders and then march out evenly. Like, that's how cities have always been designed. Uh, mm. and, and that's, I, I mean, that's crazy. And that's not conspiracy. That's straight up. Yeah. I mean, think about your state. Do you have any roads in your state, state highways or whatever, that have been pitched to the public as, well, we'll just collect tolls on this road for a few years until we're able to pay off the road construction. It'll alleviate traffic. It'll make things way faster. You're going to love it. You just have to pay a toll for a couple of years. Not, that's all. Just a, just a few. And those just tolls keeps on keeping never on. go away. No. They just keep getting higher, in fact. And then pretty but soon you have the toll booth workers. who Most are, of it is just paying the toll booth workers. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just it, it's a self-perpetuating thing. Yeah. It's a make work project. Anyway. Speaking of signage, though, yeah. I've had this idea for some time as far as making roads free. What if you were to – now, I'm in the ad business, and we're able to put a show on because people are willing to pay us for the space in between the, the things we talk about. Well, if you're putting down concrete and you're going to paint it, well, what if you were to – paint it for a period of time with, hey, look, you can be the five-year sponsor of one mile of road or whatever and say this to Walmart or whomever. I don't know. And then, you know, they put a they put signage on the road, paint it on the road because you've already got this surface going on, uh, you know, for every quarter mile and says this, you know, quarter mile of road brought to you by Walmart or something like that. And they can switch it up to Procter & Gamble. I don't know who it is. Uh, I don't like any of these big companies any more than anybody else does. But, let's... but they've already got uh, billboards on the side of the road. Right, so why not uh, just let them pay for the road itself? Why why are we paying for it when the roads all lead to them anyway? Good question. Let's go to the phones and talk to Chuck in South Carolina. Hey, Chuck, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey. Hey. Brian and Stephanie. Uh, and Mark. 
And Mark. I forgot him. But uh, anyway, I moved down here uh, about 10 years ago. Hold that I'm, thought, Chuck. I'd, I'd like to hear what you have to say, but we're just going to have to hold that thought for a moment, please. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. More coming up here in moments. Figure out, uh, talk about South Carolina. Anything else that's on your mind? Free Talk Live. America was built by people with a few dollars and a dream. And while many don't know it, there's one path to success that still only requires a dream and about $10. That's right. If your dream is to start or grow your business, something as simple as the right business card could make all the difference. And today at Vistaprint.com, you can get 500 full-color business cards for only $9.99. That's right. Only $9.99. Just go to Vistaprint.com and enter promo code 8989 at checkout. That's Vistaprint.com, promo code 8989. Are you searching for your soulmate someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the nsa stop searching with easy dns you found a keeper easy dns does it all domain names web hosting and managed wordpress hosting easy dns stands up for your internet freedom and with servers in canada they do not cooperate with the nsa go to easydns.com you'll love their services or get a full refund they guarantee it and they accept bitcoin that's easydns.com Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today is October 24th, 2014. Gold opened at 1233.30. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1278.54, 639.27 for a half ounce, or 319.63 for a quarter ounce. That's 1278.54, 639.27, and 319.63. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explained this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24 7 to help you we also have other pain relieving braces too for your shoulder ankle or back you may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you so please call now 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ladies, with the U.S. divorce rate near 30% in this job market, looks matter. Breast enhancement or reduction, a tummy tuck or a little lipo can work wonders on you and your confidence. With hospital rates at fractions of U.S. prices and thanks to the recent Thai coup, unheard of low airfare and jaw-dropping deals on luxury hotel rooms. Provide a little info. Get a quote. Hit us up at asiarunlikehellguide.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're listening to the live Sunday night edition. It's me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. 855-450-FREE is the number to call if you want to bring up anything that's on your mind and talk about it with us tonight. We do like to have discussions with you. 
855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE. Get a free pound of coffee by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. Now, if you drink coffee, and most of you do, this is a great opportunity because you'll get some of the best coffee you've ever tasted by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. It's shade grown, it's 100% organic, and it's top 1% grade Arabica beans. And that organic certification uh, matters that much more when it comes to coffee because coffee is really a rather absorbent crop. And it, you know, it, it's grown mostly in countries where they don't have the rules on pesticides, they don't have the rules on leaded gas. Those things may matter to you. Maybe they should matter to you. Coffee.freetalklive.com. But one thing that uh, other organic coffees don't do that BuzzBox does do is they give us a portion of the proceeds in order to give microloans to people around the world. And we've given many microloans at this point through coffee.freetalklive.com. And we'd love to give more. And the great thing about it is, is when the folks pay it back, we're able to give it to other people. Give them the hand up out of poverty that they need, not a hand out. Coffee.freetalklive.com. All right. Let's go back to Chuck in South Carolina. Hey, Chuck, thanks for hanging on. You were just saying in the last segment that you moved to South Carolina and you wanted to tell us about that. So go ahead. Yes. Uh, I moved about 10 years ago from Long Island, New York, mm. and uh, <clears throat> mainly because my wife wanted to come down. We had friends down here. And uh, <clears throat> since then, uh, I've found that uh, people coming down from the Northeast, uh, they want all the services that they had up in uh, in New York, uh, and yet they want to keep their taxes low. Oh, yeah. That's uh, familiar to us in New Hampshire. We yeah, have, there was we have a, a bumper phenomenon. sticker in Florida. Is, is if, you, if you liked how they did it up north, then take I-95 north and get out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wish they'd leave their politics up there, but uh, let me give you an example. Uh, about five years ago, uh, the state uh, put a penny tax uh, to take uh, in order to take the uh, uh, school taxes off of residences. Well, that was wonderful, except the school districts, be- just before the uh, uh, law went into effect, uh, they passed uh, huge bond issues, uh, which resulted in the taxes are just about the same. And not satisfied with that, the school district wants to put a uh, a penny uh, sales tax, a um, uh, a tax on uh, uh, for for the schools. Yep. Oh, that's how they and, get their foot uh, in do the it door. For the cheerleaders. Just an extra penny. Nobody they did minds in, giving a penny. They did this yeah. in Sarasota um, when I was there, and they actually had the cheerleaders on the side of the corners of oh, roads with seriously? signs saying, "Give us a penny," you know. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. In the cheerleader outfits, I'm surprised no accidents occurred. And uh, you know, they, there they are with their signs waving, jumping, and and the pom poms and the whole deal with the teachers standing. <laughs> They're sort of, you know, guiding the young minds towards more taxes. It's ridiculous yep. because, wow. I, I mean, you, you shouldn't be mixing these things together. You, the students asking for more money, is that really what you want? You want the school indoctrinating kids? It's a kids? conflict of interest. And what if you're a part of the cheerleading squad and you lose your position if you don't participate in that? That's... Or you're certainly going to get ostracized by the other gals, oh, right? Yeah, or by the teachers. Well, that's that's what they say. It's all for the children, uh, even though they don't have uh, a teachers union here like they do on Long Island. Uh, the Long Island taxes were just sky high. Uh, yeah, and it starts with a penny, right? Thank you, yep. Chuck. Thank you, Chuck, for the call okay. and uh, take care. We hope you uh, stay safe from those penny tax increases that soon turned into much much more than that. <laughs> Let's go to Keith in Iowa. Hey, Keith, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, uh, you guys were talking about the interstates and all that before. Um, I just basically have two things to say about that regarding uh, the uh, the biggest problem that that there is on uh, the public roadways is, isn't that isn't that we have too much signage or that our roadways suck. It's just that well, it seems like drivers are getting dumber. Quite frankly, they're so obsessed with their little touch screens and their little nav screens, and they just can't turn around and realize that you know what. There's a road in front of them, 
and there's a truck next to them that if he blows a tire could could put your car into the ditch and put you in a world of hurt. Well, well, you, I know, think Keith, you as, know, Keith, a lot of those backup cameras and some of the technology in the cars is mandated by the government. Yeah, and it, yeah, exactly. And it's basically the government saying, "You're still, you're, you're still, you're still too smart. We have to dumb you down some more." Yeah, I wonder I whether mean, I was honestly, a better driver, really, when it um, in the the late '90s. I remember getting trip ticks uh, from AAA in order to get from one place to another as I drove across the United States in a van. You know, you had to pay attention to signage. You had to know where to get on and where to get off. All the signs were there. So yep. you're paying more attention to the road rather than this little gizmo because I swear to God, I can get lost going down some dead-end street um, with this new with this gizmo. It's, <laughs> it's constantly trying to take me someplace that's going to... Like, I'm going to... We don't have any idea where this gizmo is hey, trying to take me. Don't pick on my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I really see your point, Keith. And like when the government mandates yeah. all this stuff, what they're saying is you're, uh-huh. you're too stupid. And when, when you treat people like they're too stupid, they kind of rise or fall to the occasion. Right. You know, exactly. It's well, like it's like I just I was just I just had an accident with my truck. Or I should say someone had an accident with my truck. I had to park on the street. Truck got my truck gets totaled. So I, get, uh, I end up getting a new truck. Yeah. You know, out of the uh, you know, as a as a loaner until I until I could uh, replace my 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 total truck. Yeah, that, that, this thing go ahead. got everything. It has tampon warmers and <laughs> traction control and a great big great big screen in the middle of the dashboard. And I'm like, I'm not here to watch TV. I'm here to drive something. You know? Does it I, does it have a key? Know, because much, the new cars really kind uh, of yeah, freaked it, me it out. Did have a key? Yeah. It, this one, this one did have a key. It kicked it a bit old school that way, but <laughs> this was a this was a brand new Silverado, and I'm just, I mean, honestly, I was kind of happy. You know, cool. I used to drive a new truck for a while, and I get in it, and I'm driving it for about 20 minutes. I handed the keys to my wife and said, "I'll drive your car until we replace it." <laughs> no, she was all happy off. with it. I'm just like, yeah. I'm just like, this is this is like the most emasculating and intellectually deadening experience I've ever had. Well, As a driver, and I drive for a living. I, I mean, hear you, I'm Keith. I really do. Um, I like the uh, classic cars. Thanks for your call tonight. This is Free Talk Live. 855-450-3733 is our number here on Free Talk Live. Yeah, I've got one of those cars that he's talking about that has have all the little gizmos in it. Um, and I... I, I've got to say that that smart key's real nice, you know? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you I, get near the car, the lights come on. No. You don't reach you for the a handle. security issue, It though? unlocks. I have no clue. I, I live in New Hampshire, uh, the lowest crime rate in the nation, so I don't know if it is a security issue or not. Yeah, I mean, I'm a tech guy, okay, but I also do enjoy cars. And, like, the new technology in cars is... I can't stand it. And also, like at Black Hat and at DEF CON, hacker conferences, they've shown where people have controlled a lot of these cars that are far more computer controlled uh, with their Android devices, you know, just via Bluetooth or whatever else. And, I mean, they can turn the car, lock the doors, and you just do all kinds of are crazy stuff. Are you concerned about your car getting hacked? This is Free Talk Live. Call us. Let us know what you think. 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 
FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com and the monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. It is the live Sunday night edition with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. You can call in about anything that's on your mind at 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE. One more time, 855-450-3733. The Pro XPN toll-free call-in lines. ISIS crisis or just more hype? Antiwar.com has the answers. Antiwar.com has the facts. Antiwar.com has the readership. What Antiwar.com doesn't have is a pot of gold. <laughs> <laughs> the war machine has the magic of the Federal Reserve's printing press and the mainstream media. All Antiwar.com has is, is you. The Antiwar.com staff is down to a skeleton crew with minimal pay. They're committed to keeping the website up. And and the- they've been surveilled by the FBI. Yes. Jesus, give these people some love. Seriously. <laughs> Last uh, donation drive they had, I sent them some Bitcoins. You can, too. If you send them Bitcoins, it's very easy to support that organization with a degree of privacy that you may not have with your Credit card, for instance. Yeah, I wish the people that use the website uh, would would do the giving because oftentimes it's it's really the only anti-war voice out there. It's it as far as it is the only one as far as I can tell. Yeah, and the only consistent one for sure. Indeed. So um, they need your donation. Please go to antiwar.com and donate. Call or call them today. They proudly take Bitcoin. Antiwar.com/slash/donate. Antiwar.com because the war is the health of the state. Indeed. In fact, I think they even take precious metals. I'm sure they would. You know, somebody gave me as a gift once a silver dollar that was called a peace dollar. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think they would really uh, like a gift like that at at Antiwar because... um, they consider Federal Reserve notes basically war dollars. <laughs> so silver would be a piece And they're right. All right. 855-450-3733 is our number here on Free Talk Live. 
we got an email that we want to discuss. Now, it's rare that we read emails on the show, so please don't go thinking that if we, you email yeah, we, us, we're going to read it. Yeah, we just don't get the chance. I we, mean, we don't. We can't get a word in edgewise, usually with our callers, which is great. We love to talk to people live, and we love to hear from people. But, you know, there are kind of some special cases where people have something they really want to talk about, but they're just not available when we're doing the show live, and they can't call in. And this was the case with the person who emailed us today. You take your chances with an email. It's like, you know, 101, 201, uh, one in, in 200 emails gets read in the air. So <laughs> yeah. every caller makes it in that calls before 9 p.m., right? I mean, yeah. we're going to get you in. Yeah. With an email, Unless not I suppose so much. You're some kind of chronic caller. But th- this person had a special request, basically. Uh, he wanted to talk about something that you have referred to before, Mark, as talk radio hell yep. or the uh, the seventh circle of purgatory or something <laughs> in talk radio, because the topic, once it gets brought up, tends to kind of monopolize the discussion. And that doesn't have to be the case here on Free Talk Live. You can call about anything you want. I'm just giving you fair warning that we are going to talk about da, 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 abortion. Da. So the emailer says, I'm interested in what you, Mark, uh, because he was addressing it to you, Stephanie and Brian, have to say about abortion from the perspective of gender equality. For for example, men and women have identical choices and rights prior to conception, but post-conception, every decision lies with the woman. If the woman wants to abort, too bad for the man. If the man wants to abort but not the woman, she owns him. If a man does not carry a child in his body, uh, oh, sorry, I know a man does not carry a child in his body, so it's not the same. But should a man have every right to refuse parentage as a woman? And if not, why? Please bring this up on a Sunday show. And he also said, I'd like to add that he thought I was the voice of reason. So <laughs> it always gives me, makes me a little tickled inside. Thank you, emailer. And this is from Nathan, by the way. So what do you guys think about the subject of abortion from a perspective of gender equality? How can we introduce some fairness, I, is what I'm hearing in what he's writing. How, how can we introduce some fairness into this unfair situation? From an ethical well, standpoint. So I would say that um, if, if you want to be fair as far as the genders go, you would need to allow a, a man who, you know, knocks a woman up, finds out about it or whatever, to go to the courthouse and uh, basically absolve himself of parental rights within, I guess, I don't know. You know what the period of time that somebody can get this is the first trimester the first four and a half months i think it varies from state to state some places i know do these like late term abortions which are horrifying um but it it also i would say that there would have to be sort of a time limit because if the woman can hide from the guy for four and a half months um, that's sort of he, he hasn't gotten any warning yeah um but it's interesting uh, so i it, that would seem fair to me as far as you know, if you can choose to uh, do away with the, the pregnancy in the first four and a half months, then I should be able to d- decide that, too. But that's a system that simply will not work. Right. Like here in the United States, that oh, system. I'm already <laughs> thinking of ways to game that system. And it, I mean, we should point out the current system doesn't work either. Right. Uh, a father can just take off and split. Right. And yeah, the woman can try to kind of go after him for child support or whatever, but they're not always successful. The father's giving up his identity to some extent, though. I mean, if you're going to try to even if you're going to stay in the United States, you're going to have a heck of a time avoiding child support. But there are lots of fathers who just take off and then don't pay their child support, even if it's judged against them, you know? Yeah, they'll work under the table, stuff like that. Yeah, you know, admittedly, I'm going to come at this and maybe this isn't uh, fair and and I can. You know, I, I, I can answer it differently if that's what's really wanted. Um, but, you know, I'm a big believer in preventative maintenance, okay? And I think that if you as a guy want to be going around, you know, and uh, having sexual encounters or relations, you know, depending on which president you are, uh, no, with... with uh, I did not have <laughs> I did not have sexual relations with that woman. That I had so a sexual encounter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, you know, and you're not interested in love or raising a family or something like that. I think, you know, you should be now granted like no one's the, male birth control is an extremely unexplored area. Uh, of the market of science, etc. But I think if you want to be doing that, if you want, you know, if you want to be rolling the dice with your baby maker, maybe you should think about, you know, getting a vasectomy 
or something like that. I really feel like it is completely unfair to depend upon or to force women to take drugs and or, you know, pills and whatever to to be on on board with that. I mean, but aren't you just slut shaming here? Um, you're telling a guy that he's got to go out and get an operation, whereas, um, you know, it's, it's pretty painless. I've had it. I, I me mean, too. Yeah, I've had the operation, too. But, you know. I mean, everybody's responsible for this pregnancy. Both people having sex are res- as responsible as the other one. Brian uh, didn't say that a man would have to get a vasectomy. He said, like, look into your options. And oh, that yeah. was the one that worked for yeah. him. Here, here's reality on life and, and planet United States is if you don't have a vasectomy, every time you uh, have an orgasm you're with a partner, you're taking your chances. And even, you know, even when you have had a vasectomy, I, sometimes I mean, you're taking your chances. C- certainly it takes two to take. Tango, okay, but I think guys are really rolling the dice if they want to be, and I don't mean this in a negative connotation, if they want to be promiscuous in any way, I mean that in a positive, okay? Uh, I think that they, they've they got a lot of responsibility that does not get put on them by society at all. You know, there's no real morality in the biological realm, and what I mean by that is that... We're it, designed to have children, we just <laughs> yes, we are designed to reproduce uh, through evolution that has made us made us that way. And yeah, it's not fair that women carry the baby inside them, and men once they uh, unload once they unload <laughs> uh, that they, they have no control over what happens to that uh, semen unless they dispose of it consciously or they've had a vasectomy and they can't get anyone pregnant. So yeah, it's it's not fair. I agree with that. Uh, I just wanted to hear him out about that first. I personally think that most of the time when you're talking about abortion and getting into debates on it, that is a lifeboat situation. That is damage control after the crisis of an unwanted pregnancy creating another life has already occurred. And what do we do about the damage control after the fact? I think it's much more productive to talk about birth control and options and and why people take perhaps the risks that lead to unwanted pregnancies or un- unplanned pregnancies in the first place and uh, to educate people about their birth control options instead of harping on, well, what is it bad to have an abortion or is it good or whatever? So let's explore that here in moments on Free Talk Live. If you want to weigh in, 855-450-3733. I hope Mark doesn't regret me inviting people to call. <laughs> 855-450 free here on Free Talk Live, the Sunday show. More coming up in moments. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Three square meals you'll need in an emergency. So the Freeze Dry Guys three square meal unit sale is just the ticket. A variety pack of tasty, nourishing breakfast, lunch, and dinner on sale now. Breakfast is Freeze Dry Guys' favorite. Hot oatmeal and sweet dehydrated bananas. Lunch is Mountain House freeze dried hot macaroni and cheese and crisp green beans. And dinner is Mountain House long grain wild rice pilaf and hearty beef stew, vegetables, and gravy. Call Freeze Dry Guy and ask for details on the 120. 26 serving three square meals unit. One case normally 164.37. Sale price at only 138.90. Save over 25 bucks. Get two or three cases and save even more. Or ask about Freeze Dry Guys Fall Chili Special. Always free shipping to the lower 48 states. Call 866-404-3663 or click freezedryguy.com. And hurry, the Fall Chili Special and three square meals unit are on sale while supplies last. From the Freeze Dry Guy, the finest freeze dried and dehydrated foods available for long term storage. Period. 
Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show, 855-450-3733. Once again, that number is 855-450-FREE. You can call and bring up anything that's on your mind. 855-450-3733. You know, if you like Free Talk Live, Brian actually has a podcast, which I am the producer of. His podcast is called Sovereign Tech, like his last name, S-O-V-R-Y-N Tech dot com is where you can find it. And it's uh, posted every week. He's been doing it for a couple of years. It's really up amongst my favorite po- podcasts out there. It's always very entertaining. I appreciate that. Yeah, actually, it's pretty much for the past month or so. It's been or a couple of months. It's been twice a week. Yeah. So usually with a special of some kind or often which you're a part of uh, or you just a regular show. You can hear me on that podcast, yeah, quite yeah. frequently. But it's a good time. Absolutely. And it's a technology podcast. Yeah, so all about how science and technology can set you free or maybe how it could enslave you. <laughs> now, will technology ever set us free from the abortion uh, issue? I mean, I, I tend to think that it's a lifeboat scenario, like I said well, before in the last segment. It's, it's talking about... When we're talking about, well, is abortion good or bad? Well, you're talking about a crisis that has occurred and how to do damage control on that crisis. And striking at the root uh, goes a long way. You know, thinking about birth control or perhaps how to prevent sexual assault and incest, you know, situations that could cause an unwanted pregnancy. Yeah, those are those are the lifeboat situations. But there's like 1.2 million abortions in the U.S. last year. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of lifeboats. Well, and there are people. It's also true that you know a lot of people who talk about the who have opinions about this issue, I think, are just coming from a place of wanting to shame women when it actually takes two people to create an unwanted pregnancy. Well, so I think that. Um, I, I, I'm on the pro-life side philosophically, right? Like, I don't have a an opinion really about what people do with their kids. My kid is fine, um, and I'm reasonably certain the rest of you people aren't going to come in contact with me. So I just, uh, I just mostly don't care. But my thought process on this is, is that, um, you know, this is pregnancy is a foreseeable outcome of sex, 
And I believe in a philosophy of yes, personal. Yes, it is, unless it's gay sex. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, there, I, I suppose I'm for abortion for gay people because it is not a foreseeable outcome of sex. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there are very few. Uh, Me too. Instances. And, Try as they may. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, um, you know, I believe in a philosophy of personal freedom and personal responsibility. So I think you should be responsible for your actions and whatever the consequences are of your actions, you need to bear them. Not it's, anybody else. It's true. It is not the fetus's fault, you know, that you didn't want it, but you created it anyway. You know. Well, I, you know, I, I, I didn't understand the question as being asked of is it right or wrong. You know, is is abortion moral or immoral? Um, but He's I asking will, about fair. Yeah, fairness, gender equality. You know, and fairness is that that's that's in my opinion a different story. But I want to make this point, and this is actually something I bring up on Sovereign Tech all the time, is that when it comes to philosophical issues, which whether or not abortion's right or wrong would be considered a philosophical issue. If it takes technology to solve it, you didn't solve anything. Uh, you ha- there has to be a like you know a first principles answer or whatever You're phraseology you want to use. You're talking about the people use. who say, well, it'll all be taken care of in the future because we'll have artificial wombs and we'll be able to transplant sure, fetuses. Sure, right. We'll, we'll create a device that can suck the fetus out and, and you know we put don't it have that. It's called an abortion. Yeah, <laughs> it'll all be taken care of the, in the future by virtual uh, virtual reality sex. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we're gonna yeah. cut down on all these rich people having right, kids. That, those those that is a solution that could decrease the incidence of unwanted pregnancies. But but we already have birth control technology now that can also really decrease the incident sure. of incidence of unwanted pregnancies. It's just that people don't use it or they don't use it correctly and they end up getting pregnant. And right. well, that, that can be prevented. Well, usually the, the first thing that's trotted out as far as, um, you know, is prophylactics, condoms, that kind of thing. Yeah. A lot of people don't like them. They're not the they're not the most fun way to have sex there's no doubt about it yep there are also long acting there's like iud's women sure. can get an iud intrauterine device and you can you're and good to i go think for charities five years. should be out there you know hitting the streets trying to in in ice cream trucks trying to get to, you know women in poor communities to 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 get those things but there's a lot of backlash against that actually though because of the eugenics conversation well not only that because of social conservatism because some people just don't want young people to have sex and they think well, that it, birth control birth control is not going to stop that. And I really think that conservatives that that have that opinion, the abstinence opinion, are shooting themselves in the foot on the abortion topic because you can really sort of have one or the other. You can have a conversation about abstinence out there where you try to keep kids away from uh, birth control and. You can have a bunch of abortions, or mm-hmm. you can have fewer abortions and kids having access to uh, to birth control. But I do want to mention the, uh, the historical link between eugenics and abortion. This um, Margaret Sanger was the pioneer of – this is from MIT's website, so you know, besmirch it if, if one must. Uh, Margaret Sanger was a pioneer of legalized abortion and the founder of Planned Parenthood. She was the largest provider, which is the largest provider of abortions in the U.S. Sanger's well known is she's a well known eugenicist whose writings make clear the historic connection between abortion and the demand uh, on demand and eugenic thinking. Sure, and I don't well, think that it's uh, I don't think that it's outlandish or odd uh, or ironic that a lot of Planned Parenthood uh, buildings since her time have been specific, you know, specifically put into ghettos and and where you know well, honestly where black communities you know where those those exist. Yeah, well, that's all true. But I mean, what if she's right for the wrong reasons, right? Like just because she was a eugenicist and those were her motivations, it doesn't mean that there shouldn't be uh, legal abortions available, right? Like, do we agree that that those two things are not necessarily connected? Well, here's what I'll Is say. Is all abortion We've, bad because Margaret Sanger was a eugenicist? I will say that, uh, for one, in the case, case of rape um, and, you know, somebody being under the age of a certain age or whatever, so basically rape and rape, um, that it's – that. Pregnancy is not the reasonable outcome of getting up and getting ra- getting up in the morning and then getting raped that day, right? Like that's so. Therefore, I am not for it in that circumstance. Consider, I have no emotional attachment to this issue. This is really about what I think you know a person's responsible for in their life, and I think that we've tried the whole let's throw doctors and teenage girls in jail for abortion thing and that really didn't work out very well Mm. so there needs to be some other solution 
Yeah. But I think we need to all go into this with eyes wide open. What's this about? Who does who does this affect? Which communities are harmed most by this? And I don't know the answer. I don't know what the harm is, but I can I would imagine I know that uh, emotionally some women really suffer from abortions. Some women also really suffer and people suffer from unplanned unwanted pregnancies that Indeed. they happen too early. Uh Let's go to the phones and talk to Deirdre listening in Iowa. Hi, Deirdre. You're on Free Talk Live. Hi. Hi. Thanks so much for taking my call. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I have a couple of points to make about this conversation. I think this is really interesting. Um, one thing I want to point out is I always hear birth control, birth control, birth control. If we could only get more people to take birth control. Well, you know, if you're somebody like me who believes that life begins at conception, well, I mean, it's actually a scientific fact. Human life does begin at conception. You you start the beginning of a human life. Um, then birth control doesn't stop that. So I'm a Catholic. One of the reasons why it's wrong in the Catholic Church to take birth control is because it doesn't stop conception. Um, it sometimes stops conception, but it often as a as a like backup stops implantation. How does so birth control not stop conception? Uh, so conception? I think Deirdre was talking about the egg and the sperm could meet and create a fertilized embryo, yeah. but it just may not exactly. implant in the wall of the uterus. Well, a vasectomy right. would exactly. stop that so from it, happening. So well, as a backup, so I'm not finished. As a backup, um, it sometimes stops implantation. And also, um, if you know women who have gotten pregnant and planned, a lot of times they're taking birth control, okay? And they're taking it as properly as they can. I have tons of friends who have gotten pregnant. And they were on birth control. It does fail. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with this completely. That's why I definitely yeah. support vasectomy. That would not be my my preferred method of uh, birth control either. But yeah, but, if you if you do a, a, a barrier me- if you use a barrier method, or if you um, have a, if the man has a vasectomy, then there is no possibility of conception occurring. What do you think about that? Um, you know, in my faith, um, I believe that you shouldn't stop human life from occurring and. There's a whole lot. I mean, we could go on and on about that because I also think you shouldn't be having sex outside of marriage, yada, yada. I understand people get raped and, you know, it doesn't always work that way. But the most important thing I'm trying to get to here is that, I mean, when do you guys believe in in a soul? Like, when does a soul occur? When does God implant the soul in this thing? I he do doesn't put it in the in condom. Soul. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, okay, when a baby is conceived, we can probably agree that there's a soul in there, right? No, I don't know. I don't believe in souls. I, I don't know about I do, souls. It's a human life. I but, think it's a human life. Yeah. You're not going to get my dispute okay, okay. on that. Um, okay, okay. But I have another point to make also. Um, one thing I really point. wanted to point out is you got here's, 10 seconds. here's an idea. Why don't we try empowering women and telling them they can handle this? As soon as they walk into Planned Parenthood, they get the idea, I can't do this. You can never handle a baby. Thanks the for the call, Deirdre. We're up against the clock. This is Free Talk Live. If Americans continue their reckless disregard of the U.S. Constitution, our freedoms and way of life may not continue. Original Intent, Spoiler, and Molan La Bay is a three-movie special that explains what we can do. From the director of Fiat Empire, this trio of movies features Ron Paul, Pat Buchanan, Edwin Vieira, and many others. On sale now at moviepubs.net. This is a mini library you don't want to be without. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hard-working men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power. But there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. 
You can get what you need at the same prices with free Super Saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, October 24th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,235, silver around $17.19, and Bitcoin is trading around $352.44. Today's precious metal prices are brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from SovereignMiners.com. Interested in mining Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies? Well, Sovereign Miners has you covered. All purchases come with a free script ISIC miner. Visit SovereignMiners.com to buy your miner today. And now, a Liberty Beat special report. A trial in Austin. I was grateful Antonio was there to take pictures of what was happening because I feared for my safety. That testimony was shared Thursday by Norma Pizana during the first day of proceedings in the trial of Antonio Beeler. An Austin, Texas activist accused of refusing to obey a police officer after he stepped in to record and ultimately defend a woman when she was apparently being treated aggressively by police. Pizana is the female passenger who was ripped from her friend's car shortly before Beeler was arrested for resisting arrest and for allegedly spitting in the face of Officer Patrick Oborski. While those charges were ultimately no billed by a Travis County grand jury, they did indict Beeler on a Class C misdemeanor charge of failure to obey the order of an officer. The state is relying on the testimony of Oborski and Officer Robert Snyder, with Oborski testifying that Beeler was verbally aggressive and that he considered him a threat. The defense is attempting to demonstrate that the officers never had the proper authority to detain or handcuff Beeler and that it was the officers themselves that were the aggressors that early New Year's morning. To show the officers as the aggressors, the defense called Pizana to the stand. She told the jury that she called out to Beeler to video record the altercation because she was afraid of what the officers would do to her, saying that she had never been treated like that by a male. At the conclusion of the lengthy first day of the trial, Beeler told the Liberty Beat that he's pleased to see the truth coming to light. I'm really glad that people have been able to come out and tell the truth about what's happened after all these years, and I'm just hoping that the jury, that they're eager to make sure that justice is served. Today is day two in the trial, and it's set to begin with the defense's questioning of Officer Oborski, followed by testimony from an expert on police policies and procedures. Beeler will also take the stand. The Liberty Beat will be there in the courtroom. And for the continuing coverage, as well as the full report of Thursday's proceedings, go to thelibertybeat.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at mymagicmud.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 24th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. On Wednesday, a new lawsuit was filed against the Environmental Protection Agency for the agency's approval of a controversial herbicide from the Dow Chemical Company. The suit was brought forth by the Center for Food Safety and Earth Justice on behalf of a coalition of groups, including the Pesticide Action Network North America. The news comes just one week after approval was granted for the use of 2,4-D on genetically modified corn and soybean. A similar suit was filed on October 16th by the Natural Resources Defense Council. The Houston Police Officers Union has accused Democratic candidate for District Attorney Kim Ogg of illegally releasing the name of a juvenile victim of sexual assault. Union President Bray Hunt claims that Ogg released the name of the victim in a news release asking for leads while she was employed with Crime Stoppers of Houston. Ogg stated that no identity was released. She says a victim's name was mistakenly included on a draft script for the television program Predator Check but was not aired on television. Kim Ogg has made headlines in the DA race by promising to decriminalize cannabis in Harris County. The Electronic Frontier Foundation has released an updated version of the Surveillance Self-Defense Report, a guide to protecting yourself from spying while on the Internet. The report includes information on important security topics, guides to privacy software, and guides for activists and journalists. The report was first released in 2009. For more information, visit ssd.eff.org. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Well, you can. Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com Amazon. 
You can help the Liberty V continue to deliver hard-hitting Liberty news and activist updates by doing your Amazon shopping after following our link at thelibertybeat.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 24th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Welcome back to the ONN Presidential Democrat Kiosk Debate. If you're just tuning in, tonight, in an historic first, Americans can ask any question at any time just by stepping into one of the thousands of Democrat kiosks we've placed in front of 7-Elevens across the country. Decatur, Illinois, let your voice be heard. Hi, everybody. My name's Joe Crawford, and my question is, how many taco and cheese taquitos do you think I can eat in 60 seconds? Kevin, uh, have we screened all of these? We haven't, but we can. We can't. Great. Straight from the heart of America, raw and unfiltered, Rockville, Maryland, to Boulder, Colorado. This is the most powerful sword in the planet. So we really can't screen these things, Kevin? Not at all. Okay, then I think I'll just ask a question of my own. What's that? Okay, no, I won't. Austin, Texas. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. It's Stephanie with you tonight. And Brian. And Mark. We are kicking off the third hour of tonight's program, and we are live here on Sunday night. Free Talk Live is a show where you can call about anything. We've been discussing a listener email on the the subject uh, that put, puts us squarely in the uh, seventh circle of talk radio hell, which is abortion. <laughs> right, Mark? Well, that's what I've been told, uh, you know, doing radio is... That- you don't want to get on the subject because... You'll never get off it. Right? Yeah, but you never get off it, and people are really polarized on it, and there, no one is going to change their mind. I would like to point out that I have changed my mind 180 degrees on this subject while have, being on the air on Free Talk Live. Not like on this on particular subject? the show. Yes, I used to be... Well, I think that it's pretty common for single guys to be pro-choice. You know, like it benefits them to be pro-choice, <laughs> so they're going to take a, a stance that, that benefits them. Um, so, And I don't blame anybody for that. It's just that at some point I came to the conclusion that a fetus at some age is a human life. And until I can figure out what age uh, that, you know, that's, uh, you know, that a person's a person, that I shouldn't be making it, you know, I shouldn't be advocating for the killing of people that might be people. Do you understand what I'm saying? I wouldn't eat an animal that can recognize itself in the mirror that has what they call self-actualization, like chimpanzees do, and apparently um, starlings, too, and like Mm. ravens. Um, Magpies. Magpies. Um, It might have been magpies, not starlings. Mm -hmm. Uh, I get my little tiny birds mixed up. But um, yeah, you know, I wouldn't eat an animal that could sort of know, hey, I'm me. Mm Mm-hmm. So well, I wouldn't advocate for that. A aborted fetus. You're just killing them, uh, which is even worse, right? Like you're not you're not using the the meat, as it were. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's it's a really difficult issue. There's well, a lot to it, and you, people like to frame it in certain ways. You know, but, even from a religious perspective, I mean, in Judaism, if the baby being born threatens the life of the mother, uh, then you take you know you, you kill the baby. Yeah, uh, you, I, you know, and and so how far does that go? Like, I mean, like, where do you take if you take that to its extremes? That really is a pro-choice position. That is saying that the mother is the most important life out of the two. Mm-hmm. No, the mother's the one that gets to make the decision. I think that the baby could just as easily choose to make a decision to end the life uh, of the mother. That's, that's God calling the shot, there, well, buddy. Well, that well, was actually no, the, that's that was, the baby <laughs> calling the shot, but it doesn't have the ability to do that. That was actually maybe we should bring it more on track here because that was actually the original question that the emailer wanted. To know he was specifically asking about basically hey you know if a woman can make this choice to abort a a pregnancy shouldn't a man be able to have a legal abortion and essentially terminate his fatherhood rights to that yeah but i wouldn't call it a legal abortion because that just means an abortion is legal uh but you know like a like you shouldn't be be able to go to the courthouse and terminate his parental rights and responsibilities. Yeah, to give up his parental rights. I know that can be done. I spoke. I've spoken with guys that have given up 
all rights and responsibilities as far as the baby goes. Really? They just don't, they have nothing. What form do you fill out to do that? Well, you don't <laughs> fill out a form as much as you are presented with the form, right? The woman oh, if has it doesn't to, have a contract, it uh, sucks. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> so the woman has to initiate that process? Essentially. Uh, I mean, otherwise you're you know beholden for as long as, if she wants to go on some kind of uh, assistance, then the state's going to come after you for that money. Hmm. This is an issue I really uh, have have worked hard to not have to deal with myself. Sure. And, uh, you know, to a certain extent, I've been lucky. Too, it gives you a, gr- a great deal of freedom in your life. I mean, it's it's if you get pregnant as a young person, uh, teenagers, statistically, you're, you're going to do worse. Yeah, every life isn't likely to be it's hard, super great as far as success goes. Yeah. And that's a really so you have the people least qualified to make decisions about their future, making decisions about their future. I understand why people advocate for abstinence, but you need to sort of look at what works and what doesn't work. And, you know, I was taught abstinence, grew up in the Christian school, the whole thing. And I didn't meet too many of my male Christian brethren uh, (laughs) that were, uh, you know, hey, this is a really great idea. Let's be abstinent. Yeah. It just it just throws it all to the girl and then the shaming comes down where oh you know the the, the calling yeah. her a tramp or whatever. And that's lopsided too in terms of who the responsibility falls on or who the shaming falls on or whatever. Indeed. Yeah. Adoption too. I mean it's not insignificant to pop out a baby. You know, it's birth is a huge medical procedure. You're actually more likely to die during birth than from an abortion. So it's not without risks to just have the baby and put it up for adoption. And then, of course, you got to find parents who are willing to take it as well. So. Usually that's I mean, it's relatively easy when you're talking about babies. Um, not always easy, but relatively easy. But my friend Ian, the co-host here on um, May Nights, what he did was like 18 years old. He decided, I'm going to get me uh, a, a tubal, not a tubal a ligation, vasectomy. vasectomy. Yeah. And it took him a little, a couple of doctors and or a few doctors and, and a little while of doing, but he managed to get it yeah. taken care of. I and, tried getting it at 18 and I was, you know, quickly turned around saying, son, you don't know what you want. Right. You know, and that's crazy because I finally ended up getting one. I knew exactly what I wanted. And you're, I mean, there's lots of kids to adopt out there, and some of them are older than babies. You don't even have to do the baby thing. That's, you know, frankly, that's that's, true. that's the hardest time of taking care of a kid. This is why I'd love to get it on with women, because you don't have to worry about this problem. Uh, <laughs> I do. Let's go to Zach in Chicago. Zach, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me here. Zach, your your phone audio is breaking up a little bit. We'll we'll try it, but just just to give you a warning, if there's any way you I'm can sorry, shift. I'm oh, that's better. Traveling, so my um, I was. Can you hear me fine? Or yep, it sounds good. Go go for it. I was listening in on your abortion topic. Um, I only like, I've had this discussion a lot, and I find it very difficult to find a significant ground to have an abortion conversation unless we're able to really define what where life begins. And in, in some medical senses, we know that um, I think in a medical sense, life ends, I believe, when the brain stops functioning or the heart. But when life actually begins, that's kind of a gray area that we haven't really have a clear death is a gray area too i mean it's it's true like i did i actually went to medical school for two years and it's it it is actually a gray area you can have people who are so-called brain dead right where they have no higher brain function but they're still breathing their brain stem is working terry shivo case was a uh, was you know big national media news for a while is she dead in some meaningful sense to the people who knew her yeah of course but then again people change and are is Mark of is eighteen year old Mark in a sense dead? Yeah, he doesn't exist anymore. You're a, a different person. Sure. So, yeah, it's tricky to define life and death. I personally, I think you know, if you're going to talk about yeah, conception, it's a fertilized embryo. It has all the potential to develop into a human being. That's a human life. I don't know how you could look at it any other way. So, if you wanted to start from that point, Zach, uh, you you got me. You got me there. <laughs> So you're saying that uh, potential life um, is equivalent to life that deserves rights 
and or being protected or I don't know if I, I, rights are a can of worms in like. in themselves, you know, because uh, what are rights? What are your rights as an adult human and who is going to guarantee those rights? What are my rights? Um, that's kind of a can of worms. Um, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's it's difficult to um, say it's difficult to say that anybody has a right to anything right because you could just you could just die you don't have a right to life you could your life could end at sort of any moment you could have a heart attack you could get cancer whatever you get hit, hit by a bus rights are an agreement um, even it, fetuses when they uh, like a lot of pregnancies naturally spontaneously abort and, and usually and, within right. the first trimester like, exactly think, like maybe a third i think like yeah it's about a third cat from the uterus or something of that nature where the pregnancy just failed yeah but thanks for the call zach i think we're gonna have to move on this is free talk live 855-450-3733 lots to discuss here for sure but i want to make sure everybody gets their thoughts in 855-450 free we're coming up here on the sunday show free talk live Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. An alarming new study finds that people suffering from stress-related disorders react poorly to being trapped in underwater elevators. A tired 398-month-old throws a tantrum, and a little clay thing is purchased at an arts festival. And now an eerily perfect recap of this week's news. The Catholic Church reversed its long-held stance against gay marriage this week after meeting Connecticut couple Tony and Craig. The vacationing pair dazzled the Pope and assorted clergy with their witty conversation and true loving affection for each other, leading Vatican officials to conclude that love is love and it's silly to put restrictions on it in this day and age. The Chinese people announced that they would be willing to forgive most of the United States $1.16 trillion debt if Americans agreed to dress up in costumes and perform silly dances for them. Chinese officials encouraged U.S. citizens to wear sequined vests and prance around while slapping their big fat American tummies, promising that the more humiliating the performance, the more debt will be erased. In sports, NASCAR fans are deeply puzzled by a mysterious black family seen attending multiple races. This is the Onion News Network. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. 
With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You're listening to the live Sunday night show. In case you're just joining us, we are live this Sunday evening, and it's me, Stephanie, with you. And Brian. And Mark. Our number here on Free Talk Live is 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE, spelling the word free. One more time, 855-450-3733 here on Free Talk Live. If you want to get some gold and silver, and I think now is a great time to get, you know, silver specifically, I'm not saying gold's a bad buy, but I'm just looking at prices, and for myself, silver looks like a... Oh, it's on sale. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I just think now's the time, because it's at, last time I looked, like, 17 bucks. Yeah, unbelievable. For an ounce of silver, and I can only imagine it going upward from here. It's used in all kinds of electronics. It, uh, it it's it's becoming more and more scarce as time goes by. It's not worth it's, getting out of those electronics. Yeah, actually, so they just get thrown thrown away. Right. I mean, three years to today, the troy ounce is worth double that. I mean, yeah. so it is statistically on sale. Right. So I, I and I expect it. Uh, you know, I, I just think it's a great time. So please go get some gold or silver at gold.freetalklive.com. We've got lots of options there, including. Uh, you know, the 0.999 silver rounds, which uh, is what I'm recommending for folks as far as investments go. And if you look at my record here on Free Talk Live, I haven't had too many misses. I can't think of one, frankly. <laughs> um, but you might Were say... Were you telling people to buy silver when it was $50 an ounce or $75 an ounce? I was certainly running ads, and I would say something like, if you wanted to get as a hedge against inflation and investment or barter currency, but I wasn't saying, I, Mark Edge, believe that silver is only going to go up from here <laughs> um, I would have found it difficult to imagine that it was going to go down to $17 but that's not me taking a stand and advocating for something that's just you know hey Mark do you think silver is going to go down to 17 bucks from here I can't imagine that but you know <laughs> if you call it and ask me questions I'm bound to be wrong but there's been a few few times when I've made recommendations for buying and this is one of them I still think bitcoins are a good buy but you know, they've over the last few months they've been kind of upsy downsy. Silver, I can only imagine it going up from here. I'm this not is saying. not investment advice, just uh, Mark's personal opinion. Gold.freetalklive.com. <laughs> All right, let's go to Skype where Abel is on the line. Hi, Abel, you're on Free Talk Live. Good evening, all. It's great to talk to the three of you. Hi there. Um, my concern, and I, I've got personal you know, third party experience that I recently found out about, you know, the whole abortion thing. And, and I, and I, and I, and it's very close to home and it's very, very, uh, controversy making internally for me, you know, having been, you know, kind of a pro choicer for a long time. And I mean, I basically converted to, you know, Abortion is bad, you know, that there is there is no good solution for the state to deal with it at the same time. I'm I'm there, too. I, I have no good solution to this. I'm just of the opinion that I sh that, you know, one shouldn't be deciding that another person can't live. Um, but I don't think the state should be involved at all. Uh, right. we've, we've tried that whole let's throw doctors and teenage girls in jail thing, and it went really badly. We're talking about alleys and coat hangers and the whole deal. All this is going to do is— Before that, there were herbs and teas and, yeah. you know, oh, oops, yeah. had a miscarriage, you, you know. know? It's amazing. I mean, like even as Abel's saying here, it, this is such a personal subject for so many people, and yet somehow—again, this is so personal, but somehow— they pe people think that they can, you know, get the government to force their way, their opinion onto yeah. others. I mean, there's no doubt this is an individual and incredibly personal subject. That's all the more reason that government should not be involved in this matter by it, any stretch. It, it, 
if you put government involved in abortion, what you're going to do is to make every uh, woman that's capable of conceiving to, to be in fear. Yeah, absolutely. And so in some places they do have these laws where a miscarriage is considered, you know, something you have to report to the police, sub, right? Sub, you know, questionable. Yeah. yeah. So so my approach to the whole thing is to to look at the, you know, basically you've got a woman and you've got a pregnancy. And 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 are you as that woman, you know, what is in her life? It's so important that 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 life needs to be terminated rather than go forward with that pregnancy. Well, and there could be a lot of things. I mean, giving birth is a health risk. Uh, it is significantly more expensive. Um, it could be emotional trauma if she's been impregnated against her will. You know, uh, you don't want to carry a pregnancy that you never wanted in the first place. Well, I, you know, all of those things are true. Uh, you know, I, I have to actually challenge you a little bit, uh, uh, Stephanie, because uh, you called birth a medical procedure. It only becomes a medical procedure when there's some sort of a failure. It is a normal health function. And, okay, but uh, even and, in natural births, there is a risk uh, that something could go wrong. And right. it's... it's I, I'm, it, I'm, you're I'm, right. It doesn't have to be like a medicalized procedure I'm, or a surgery I'm pretty, I'm pretty close to that right myself and and it turns out that uh, both of my children were born uh, at home uh, with uh, well one the midwife was a bit late because there was only an hour and 15 minutes of labor but the uh, but my son had a <laughs> midwife and and I'm going to uh, have my uh, granddaughter born as well uh, at home uh, with a midwife and Good you know you. I, and 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 you're talking about a much less expensive operation than going to a hospital hospitals have so much bureaucracy ladled into everything that they do you know i the actual you know incremental cost uh without all that crap is uh is is probably a couple hundred bucks, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, Mark, yeah, didn't you look into this? And thank you for the call, Abel. I appreciate your thoughts. Look into... When your wife was pregnant, mm -hmm. you were looking into paying out of pocket for yes. her birth. And, she and that was, was about gonna... 10 grand. Um, my son's six years old for, uh, you know, just comparisons here. It was about 10 grand to do it at the hospital. I believe the... Uh, midwife charged five grand. Now, I would like to point out that I think that that is a highly distorted market for midwives because of how many hospital births there are out there with, uh, you know, essentially yeah. employment how contracts and things like that. Also, for the midwife, is like to cover their legal liability insurance, you know? But if they, well, and how much is supply and demand? Because how many more midwives will there be if uh, it wasn't, if everybody didn't get, in, didn't get a free pregnancy at their, at the hospital because they're basically their employer has a health plan or whatever. Mm -hmm. So but didn't you say Mark that like back in the 1950s or something oh, like yeah. that, there's this meme that goes around where you could have a baby in a hospital all said and done for like a few hundred dollars back in 1950 something. Right. And if you translate it, it comes out to less than a thousand dollars for a hospital birth in today's dollars that essentially it's been litigation not only that regulation insurance all these things have driven the price up back then they were doing a lot of interventions and in births too i mean i'm talking like putting the woman out while she's having this baby strapping her down in some cases horrifying stuff but at least it was cheaper uh <laughs> so that just shows the difference between hospital and home births this is a situation that i never want to be in personally what do you think Eight. I'm sure nobody wants to be in it, but if you have a solution, you can let us know. Free Talk Live, the Sunday show. More coming up. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? 
I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Fact. The new NSA data center in Utah requires 1.7 million gallons of water every single day to operate. Billions of Fourth Amendment violations need massive computers and the water to cool them. That water is being supplied by the state of Utah. Fact. There's absolutely nothing in the Constitution which requires your state to help the feds violate your rights. Our message to Utah? Turn it off. No water equals no NSA data center. Visit offnow.org. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Tonight, it's me, Stephanie, with you. And Brian. And Mark. 855-450-FREE is our number here on Free Talk Live. 855-450-3733. Coming up here, I think we're going to talk about a panty raid at some point. Just wanted to tease that for you. (laughs) (laughs) But if you have anything you want to bring up, you're welcome to change the topic to anything that's on your mind. 855-450-3733. If you go to LegalZoom.com, you can, well, you can get all kinds of legal forms that you don't have to pay nearly as much for. Uh, LegalZoom.com and businesses like it, I think LegalZoom was probably the first one that I'd heard of that makes it possible for you to sort of fill out forms. They ask you some questions, and then they fill out the form for you. And they're not lawyers, but they were started by an attorney. 
and they make it easy for you. Whether you're talking about wills, patents, trademarks, bankruptcy, disability benefits, DUI, DWIs, living trusts, living wills, uh, patents, business annual reports, LLCs, not-for-profits, whatever it is that you need, they've got it there. They've got a form. They make it easy. It's LegalZoom.com. If you use coupon code FTL when you use their services, you'll get $10 off your order. It's worth it, right? Just enter a code. FTL for $10 off your order at LegalZoom.com. All right. Let's go to Skype where John is on the line. Hey, John, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hi. Um, I'm calling from Rutgers University in New Jersey. Okay. And um, part of the Rutgers University uh, Y'all Club, Young Americans for Liberty, I'm sure you guys know that. Heard of them. Know that we're... Right. And um, so... We're sort of a really small club, only maybe four or five active members, and we're looking for ideas for what sort of activism to do. Hmm. So you're on a college campus, and you've got a basically liberty-loving group, and there's it's a pretty small group, but maybe you want to attract some new members and get the word out about liberty. What can you do, right? Yeah. You know, um, I, I. You know, I've always done the uh, marks out of ideas. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't really have any ideas for tr- transferring uh, drunk college students into the ideas of liberty. I don't have any good uh, things. Ian's kind of the activist. I would recommend the calling in well, any other day of the week than this one. I, I mean, personally, John, I actually per- have had some experience with doing. John, I'm just going to put you on hold for a second because you got some uh, audio glitches coming out some weird audio but sounds like it's Tourette's <laughs> I'm sure it's not him it's probably his microphone but yes. anyway um personally I've had experience with doing activism um I moved to New Hampshire in 2006 to participate in the Free State Project and at first I kind of got involved in politics and then I realized that wasn't working it made me miserable it wasn't work wasn't creating any change uh then i thought well you know i really don't want to do any kind of civil disobedience i don't feel like going to jail i don't think that forwards the cause of freedom really certainly not yours so yeah certainly not mine (laughs) and that's what i'm most interested in so i said i'm not going to do that uh and then i decided to get into media i got interested i i listened to a lot of talk shows that was how i kind of came to the ideas of liberty and i decided to start my own and that to me was the most fulfilling and it also allowed me to have a hobby and eventually a source of income that I made uh, made my own and used to make my life better. So convincing other people about freedom is great, but your primary the primary thing that's going to get you more free and happy in your own life is focusing on yourself, right? You can get out there with a, uh, now that you mentioned media, this sense, those man in the street things, people love to see those um, mm-hmm. because they, you sort of, you're doing this at college campuses. The, the, the minds that people care about the most are on college campuses. <laughs> These are the And you have great ways minds. to reach out. Like you could start a, a radio show, a college radio show. Sure. But you could just take a, a, you know, a little HD camera and go around and ask questions of college students mm-hmm. that you think would be that c- people that are, you know, concerned consuming YouTube uh, information That's they're going to want to know put it up on your blog yeah and then you're going you're getting out there you're you're asking questions you're going to find one every 100 person or whatever is going to be interested in what you're doing and so you're you know you're getting in front of the students and then whoever and, sees it on YouTube might may also be drawn to it and yeah. John I'm just going to I'm going to bring you back I had you on hold for a minute but I'm bringing you back just in case you have any comments you wanted to make yeah, I thought you guys might also be interested to know that we have uh, some Coke operatives in our, even in our really small club. Oh, you mean the Coke brothers that everybody alleges libertarians are funded by the Coke? Yeah, I always thought it was myth until I joined this club. And, uh, <laughs> there, was, there was this relatively attractive blonde blonde woman who came, and I asked her, you know, well, where are you from? She looked too old to be a college student. And um, she said that she worked for the Leadership Institute and basically explained how she's doesn't work for the Koch brothers now, but, you know, she did before. And oh, wow. It's a, the thing that where she's she's got sent. She lives in the other side of the country and got sent out to go up and down the East Coast and try to start. She said any Republican or Libertarian leaning club. That's very interesting. <laughs> hmm. Thank you for the call tonight, John. I appreciate your thoughts and good luck with your club. 
<laughs> the, it's I true. The, the myth Koch about the Koch brothers. Money. <laughs> yeah, I, actually, I should have asked him if if she uh, offered any money. <laughs> that would have been a, that would have been best. I mean, because if you so if you, Mark, tell me what you think about this. If you got funding from an organization that you didn't a hundred percent agree with, but some there was some agreement there. Do you think you could still do good with that funding, or do you think you should try to go for funding that was from someone that was more in line with your values or bootstrapping your own thing? Um, I think it's fine to take money from wherever you take it from. Uh, I think of the Ron Paul campaign where they some, some media organization showed that the, some people from the KKK or some bigoted organization gave him some money. And he said, of course we're going to keep the money. We're going to use it to, you know, spread the ideas of liberty. We're going to do use it for good things. And so, you know, money doesn't have uh, money doesn't have an agenda. It's organizations that have an agenda. Now, I guess it, it depends how many strings are attached. It's the right? strings. Like if you're if you're starting a business and somebody wants to give you funding, but they also want equity in your business, perhaps it would be better to just uh, bootstrap your own startup so that you don't have to give away any of your equity and you can have it for yourself. Uh, but with with nonprofit organizations or clubs, it's a little different. It's not exactly a business, but you don't want to give away your moral support or your intellectual equity, I guess you could say, in the in that organization to someone else. You don't want to sell out, basically. Mm -hmm. So if you can avoid it, I mean, it's probably best to bootstrap. And making YouTube videos is a great way to do that. It's true. I think that uh, I think that might be a great way for them to get some publicity. Cool. All right. Yeah. Well, good luck, John. <laughs> I, I don't think I would take any money from like the military or DARPA. But again, I guess that comes down that that doesn't even necessarily come down to the strings, uh, though DARPA always comes with a ton of strings. But oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I really you know, I can't see that. But by and large, yeah, exa I agree that organizations are the things with the agenda. Right. Let's go talk to Sean in Iowa. Sean, uh, I'm going to bring you on here. Sean, you're on Free Talk Live. Uh, what's on your mind tonight? My mother and my father, both. What's that? Say it. Repeat what you said. My father and my mother are both on my mind. Okay. Okay. Tell us more about that. Why is that? Well, they're both really important to me, and, well, they've done so much for me, and I'm just lucky to have both of them. Indeed. I, I you know, when it comes to parents, and uh, there's nobody's going to be more important in your life than your parents. Generally, exactly. That's what I. That's what my dad keeps saying. He says nothing's more important than us, and to me, nothing is more important than you. Well, that's very nice. Thanks for your thoughts, Sean. Appreciate your call. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three is our number here on Free Talk Live. Eight fifty five four fifty free. Bring up anything that's on your mind. You know, if I could, can I bring up one, one last comment about the whole abortion business, or do you? No, yeah, never oh, mind. Yeah, we're no. at, we're on the clock. If you can do it quick, sure. No, I can't do it quick. We're on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Well, coming up, we're going to talk about the panty raid. <laughs> if you want to find out what that's all about, then stick with us. Or you can call in and change the topic, 855-450-3733. Or on Skype, lrn.fm. More coming up here on the Sunday show of Free Talk Live. The event you've been waiting for is here. Lumber Liquidators, third annual fall flooring yard sale. It's your chance to get first quality, full warranty, direct from the mill flooring at unbelievable closeout prices. Like oak laminate for an incredible 19 cents a square foot and pre-finished three-quarter inch solid maple for just $149. Plus beautiful bamboo for 63% less than other stores. Take advantage of our 20 years of savings with 20-month special financing and get even more unheard of flooring deals in our stores. Fall flooring yard sale is Thursday through Monday only. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. coffee.freetalklive.com. 
Hi, this is Steve Sanchez, and based on a recent study, it was found that 57 million Americans had legal issues over the last 12 months, but only 60% of those studied sought out the services of a lawyer. Why? In a nutshell, affordability. While well, my friends at Legal Shield have created a solution that can help you not if, but when you need an attorney. For as little as $17 per month, Legal Shield will provide you unlimited access to qualified attorneys at an accomplished law firm for advice and counsel on legal issues no matter how serious or trivial. For over 40 years and with 1.4 million families across North America, Legal Shield can help you, the loyal GCN listener. Representatives are standing by now to answer your questions, so call them now at 1-855-340-SAVE. That's 1-855-340-7283 or visit them at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Results will vary from case to case. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. It's Stephanie with you. And Brian. And Mark. 855-450-3733 is our phone number. We can get your calls in, but you better do it quickly here on Free Talk Live. Uh, I am actually a voice actor. You may not have known that, but it's true. You can visit my website at smvoice.info. I do all kinds of stuff like make audiobooks and video narrations and radio and TV commercials. And I've been uh, pretty prolific. And I also post some blog content on my website. So one more time, smvoice.info, if you want to learn more about that. And let's, oh, Brian... Yeah. Yeah, Brian does a show, too. Oh, yeah, oh, we already talked we about Brian's show. Did we? Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Thanks, Mark. Mark. you've got a short memory. I appreciate that. <laughs> all right. But a great haircut. It's all I'm, the drugs in the 60s. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to alive? work out no. the... Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to work out our Skype issues here. We've got two calls on. Oh, here we go. Let's Man, play. I don't even do it. When somebody calls in and somebody else is on Skype, I don't even answer. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've not found a way to work it out. Let's bring Nathan on the line. Hi, Nathan. You're on Free Talk Live. And it's uh, great to be on Free Talk Live because uh, you don't have comments such as uh, uh, I saw on Fox News a while ago where the guy said, you know, these people, these terrorists, they have an ideological basis for their actions, but they're really just murderers. So zero irony there. <laughs> wow. Um, why are you, why are so, you watching Fox News? Uh, well, I had a kitty on my lap, and I didn't want to disturb it, and so the price of that was watching Fox News for about 30 minutes. Aww. That does happen. <laughs> Indeed. 
So speaking of sovereign tech, I was wondering uh, what Brian and, well, I guess all, all of you thought about the gentrification in San Francisco. It's kind of been this uh, ongoing uh, process of uh, increasing property values in the city over time. Uh, you know, and there's videos of people getting their Google Glass smashed into the ground and, you know, because of uh, antipathy against, uh, I guess, the rich Silicon Valley types. So uh, I was wondering what you guys thought about that and uh, how do you think a free society would solve this, I, mm. I guess, if, if it's even a problem. I'm not even convinced Great. that gentrification is a problem per se. Great question, Nathan. Well, first, I'd like to point out that the government is doing nothing to help this problem. In fact, they are making it worse because... There, it's really hard to get housing in San Francisco, whether you're talking about renting a place or just like a short term, even like, a, you know, staying at a motel or something. And what the government there has done, the city government actually put some ordinance in place where um, if you want to rent, rent out your place on Airbnb, you have to get some kind of a license oh, and yeah, you have to pay you hotel do. taxes as though you are actually operating a hotel. Uh, so they're not doing anything to help the housing crisis. In fact, they're probably making it worse. Yeah, I, you know, when it comes, gentrification is a process, right? And again, I don't know, it, there's always been movements of Luddites that don't, don't want to see change. It's going to be, in this case, they're able to say, it's the rich going after the poor. Well, who are they buying the houses from? Obviously, the poor people's house, housing values are going up or they're renters. But what if you're a renter and you've lived there for a while yeah. and then all of a sudden your rent is going up because of no nothing you can really control it's just that's a bunch like of people moving into town that's like complaining that the immigrants are coming and taking our jobs if you didn't buy something it's none of your business you you're renting you you well, signed a lease for one year and that's how long your rent should stay stable for because that's the deal you made gen, gen, uh, gentrification is like kind of a mystery as to what, why it doesn't occur like everywhere you know why doesn't it just happen and i think that's really a clue as to the situation is that silicon valley is such a unique situation i mean like the speed and in fact maybe in history that we know of uh because the speed at which like the wealth was created there uh etc i mean is just is pretty unparalleled you know, I mean, for, for Bill Gates to, like, make the billions he did in such a short period of time scared the crap out of the old order, big time. And that's still happening to this day. Uh, but I think, you know, as, as far as it being an issue, uh, I, I do, honestly, I think it is an issue, and partly because uh, this is a bubble. Like, the whole tech thing, the whole tech scene going on in Silicon Valley is a bubble. It's ready to pop in about two years. And really? I, in my opinion, yeah, because this is not, none of this is based on actual innovation. Um, some of it was innovation. But even, you see, you know, you watch what Apple released the past couple of weeks, and there's nothing innovative there. Like, even their watch stunk. OK, and I love Apple. I, I like the fact that they're an innovate, that they have been an innovative company in what they've done. OK, but it's not there. The app economy, it's already being shown like because part of what's what's propping up Silicon Valley is this, you know, smartphone app economy. OK, but now they're finding statistically that most people are just sticking with apps that they've been using for two, three years now. They're not using the new ones. And so you have this bubble of me too apps coming out that nobody's getting any funding behind. Yet all these guys have the attitude, the human hubris, OK, where they think that, oh, yeah, you know, I am 